imagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com. Oh, by the way, we do shutters too. This is Sports Center. I'm Christine Lisi. Two of the NBA's top teams face off tonight when the defending champion Nuggets visit the Timberwolves. Each team has won 11 of its last 13 games, and they're tied for second in the West, just a half game back of Oklahoma City. Of course, the stars are key, but so are the role players for both teams. ESPN NBA analyst Tim Legler. Jane McDaniels and his contributions offensively, the impact that he has defensively. And I look at Nas Reed, who has been more than adequate you know, filling in for an injured Carl Anthony Towns. He's been spectacular at times. And then for Denver, Michael Porter Jr., who may be playing some of the best basketball of his career since the All-Star break. And then Aaron Gordon, which who I think every night the Nuggets look spectacular. Aaron Gordon has his imprint all over that. Cavaliers shooting guard Donovan Mitchell out at least one week after undergoing a procedure to repair a nasal fracture. Clemson's accompanying Florida State in the legal fight against the ACC. Clemson filed a lawsuit against the conference over its media rights deal. Tigers, like FSU, seeking to nullify the $140 million penalty the ACC says it would owe if the school left the conference. Hey, it's your resident Super Bowl champ, Chris Candy, coming on Wednesday with all the shuffling we've seen at quarterback. I'll tell you which teams are headed for QB competitions. It's on Sportsmanlike, 6 a.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2, and ESPNU. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. Live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. And off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. AFR powered by Sunshine. Your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. I'm Matt. This is Shaq O'Neal, and I hate that. Paul O'Neal. They're chanting Paul O'Neal's name. Mm, you so. And Mr. Toby Tom Blake. We're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there and make it a good one. Shake Dixon in 15 minutes. LSU gymnast Aaliyah Finnegan, Connor McClain, bottom of this hour. Feinswog's back. He was uh, playing water polo in the Middle East. Looking forward to hearing those stories. Five-star offensive line commit Tyler Miller in hour three. We got a ton to do. Let's not waste any time. It's time to pop the top on another edition of AFR with Bud Light. Drink easy. Well, Chase Young was introduced uh, to the media on Monday night. We learned while we were on air that the um, former number two overall pick agreed to terms with the New Orleans Saints. So he's there at the facility. They don't let him leave. He agrees to a contract. He signs it, meets with reporters, and look, said he's fired up to be in New Orleans, as one would be. Man, just excited to be a Saint, man. Uh, You know. Just excited to help this team, uh, grateful, um, you know, um, for the opportunity. And, uh, you know, my plan is to make the most of it and, uh, you know, help this team to get to that one common goal. Yeah, the one common goal, get back to the playoffs, be really good. And look, we talked about it yesterday. We talked about it. Love the move to sign Chase Young for a lot of reasons. Super high ceiling, right? Guy was a freak show at Ohio State. The number two overall pick in the draft. 
went to Washington, productive as a rookie, played in all but one game, had seven and a half sacks, 10 TFLs. Then the injury bug hit last year, part of the season in Washington, part of the season in San Francisco. And now his rookie deal's up. He's a free agent. Hey, look, high, high, high ceiling, low risk, one-year proven deal. Of course you want to bring in Chase Young. Why wouldn't you bring in Chase Young? I love bringing in Chase Young. And we learned the Saints are giving a $13 million deal. One year, $13 million. That's fantastic. It's exactly what we thought it would be. It's a, a prove-it deal. Yeah, you're going to compensate him, but really what he wants is long-term security and yet a guarantee the 13 mil, and I'm fine with that. So, yeah, look, Chase Young talked about why he picked the New Orleans Saints when the Panthers and Titans were also interested. Just a culture, man, uh, just a tradition, um, you know, just uh, Saint is one of those um, places that, uh, you know, a winning culture, um, and you know, that's what, uh, that's what I wanted to, um, you know, be around. And, uh, you know, I feel like this was a place for me. Culture and tradition, that winning culture, that tradition. Also the 13 million guaranteed. And did we mention he's having neck surgery? Adam Schefter. Chase Young, who signed a one-year $13 million deal with New Orleans today, is undergoing a neck procedure that is expected to sideline him into training camp, per sources. The expectation is that he'll return in time for the season. Teams were aware of the neck issue, and the Saints were comfortable moving ahead with it. Okay. Okay. Let's unpack this. First of all, if you're asking the question, why didn't San Francisco re-sign him? Remember, San Francisco sent a third-round pick to Washington for Chase Young seven games into the season. So San Francisco sent a third-round pick to Washington, and they got Chase Young for nine games and two sacks. Why wouldn't they try to re-sign him? Uh, that's probably a pretty good indication of why. Now, let's be very clear. There are a lot of players that miss off-season workouts. Okay? They miss off-season workouts, and they come back, and they're fine. And Joe Burrow, his knee exploded in November of his rookie season. He missed all the offseason, got back in time for the start of the season, had an all-pro caliber year, and took the Bengals to the Super Bowl. Drew Brees, famously, when he signed with New Orleans, we all know the Dolphins doctors wouldn't clear him. Saints did. Drew's told the stories he's written about in his book. He couldn't even fully throw throughout the preseason of that 2006 season. And we know the rest of the story there. Now you know the rest of the story. Thank you, Paul Harvey. And there's plenty of guys. I mean, look, remember that time Michael Thomas, you know, went astray and missed the entire offseason and showed back up for oh, that didn't work out so great. Yeah, I forgot about that one. Yeah, he ended up missing the entire season. Listen, I'm not trying to completely poo-poo the entire thing today, okay? But if you can't honestly look at this situation and feel a smidge different than you did yesterday, then you're not being truthful with yourself. I mean, I was the guy, like, pounding the table yesterday. Don't let him out the building. Don't let him out the building. Don't let him out the building. You got to get Chase Young for all the reasons. High ceiling, low risk, affordable, Young guy, only played in 43 career games. You just got to get, you got to motivate it, prove it to you. Check, 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 check. All of it made a ton of sense. And now you learn that he's got to have neck surgery, and that changes a little. Now, I want to clarify one thing, and this is notable. Adam Schefter reports that Chase Young is undergoing a neck procedure. And in medical terms, there is a difference between a procedure and surgery, okay? 
So I'm curious the extent, like surgery involves cutting. A procedure can be anything medical in nature. A, a procedure could be injections. May, maybe, I, I do not know. This is a total hypothetical, right? Let me not even say Chase Young. If I were to go get stem cells injected into my knee for knee pain, that's a procedure. I didn't have surgery at a procedure. So maybe it's something along those lines. Don't I do not know. And maybe that's semantics and Schefter didn't report it properly there. Don't know. That's my hope is that it's not something as severe. They can say, we're just going to give you this procedure, let it rest throughout the offseason, we'll see you in training camp. We'll see how it goes. Look, my optimism is there for Chase Young for all the reasons I said on Monday. I mean, you have a guy that's 24 years old in his physical prime. The two seasons he stayed healthy in the NFL, he's been a productive player. He's at a position of need. It clears the deck a little bit in the draft because you signed Chase Young. You're certainly not looking for an edge rusher at 14. You're not looking for Latu or Dallas Turner or one of the edge guys, Jared Verse, at 14. So... So for a lot of reasons, this makes sense. And I don't even mind the $13 million. Hey, look, it ain't my money, but I'm just talking from a cap perspective. The Saints went into this with about $16.5 million free to spend. Still got to sign your draft pick, so you got work to do. But I don't even care that they gave Chase Young $13 million guaranteed. It ain't my money. And they'll figure it out with the cap however they got to. For a one-year player you hope produces and signs a long-term deal, it's worth it. For the potential for the potential reward, but if you were realistically looking across the hall at San Francisco and going, "Why didn't they resign him?" This could be the reason. So there has to be at least some trepidation, some skepticism, some 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 valid questioning about what Chase Young's ceiling and ability will be this year if he's got this neck issue that potentially lingers into training camp. And beyond. Chase Young is officially a member of the Saints. He is a he's signed, sealed, and delivered. $13 million, fully guaranteed. But we're going to have to wait a little while until we see him in the black and gold because he's undergoing a neck procedure and they hope to have him ready for training camp. All right, it's after further review. We're glad you're with us. Tuesday shows powered by Sunshine. Our show open every day is brought to you by Bud Light. Drink easy in Louisiana with the great taste of Bud Light, the official beer of the New Orleans Saints, the official beer of the LSU Tigers. Of course, you're going to be out at the PMAC tonight. Got some NIT action with LSU in North Texas. If you're going to be at the box, LSU, Louisiana Tech, make sure you have plenty of ice cold Bud Light. Our friends over at Mockler Beverage, a great partner uh, of ours and of LSU Athletics for decades. It's Mockler Beverage and Bud Light. Drink easy with the official beer of AFR, Bud Light. Okay, we'll not got a break. Switching things up a smidge today. Uh, Shay Dixon normally with us in hour two on Wednesdays. He's going to join us next. We just had to do a little bit of a, of a change. So Shay Dixon joins us next on AFR. AFR. Man, I love telling you about evenings at the Renaissance. The Renaissance Hotel right there on Blue Bonnet in Baton Rouge. I've been telling you for more than a year now about Tallulah inside of the Renaissance Hotel. And this has been a great way that at the Renaissance, they've allowed you to get to know Tallulah and to experience it, just to experience something different. So they brought great events into the hotel. The next one is coming up March 22nd. So we're talking three days from now, Friday, this coming Friday. It's the Oxbow Spirit Tasting Experience from 6 to 8.30 p.m. 6 to 8.30, you could dive into a world of unique spirits, an evening of sophisticated tastes and cocktails, limited availability, and spots are free, but you have to reserve your spot. So call the Renaissance Hotel. You're looking for something fun and creative and different to do this Friday in Baton Rouge? Go experience evenings at the Renaissance at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet.
It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Gulf Coast Bank & Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart... After further review, powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. It's like a good, it's like a good friend you haven't seen in a long time, Muse. I was out last week, you know what I mean? It's, it's like one of the, it's one of those songs we sound like I've heard in, uh, I had heard this song probably about ten years, and when you hear it, you know, it's, it's like. You got a great song like that, Muse. It's like hearing it for the first time again. Like a warm blanket comes over you, a good warm Muse, feeling. Muse, don't step on the post. Come on. You're a radio guy. Be better than that. Did you ever do music radio, Muse? Ever? Very sparsely when I first started here. What did you do? Overnights on Eagle. No chance. Yeah. And nobody told you about not stepping on the post. You walk up the post, Muse. What are you doing? You don't step on the post. Oh, it's different. You got to hit the post. Yeah, but it's, it's different when you have it like in front of you. You can see where that's going to be. Muse, you know this song. I do. You're better than that. Go buy a tractor, Muse, or a zero-turn mower. Our friends over at John Deere. How about a gator? Oh, my guy Rooney showed me a... The purple and gold gator, the LSU Tiger Gator from Sunshine. Oh, man, that's good. Okay, uh, let's get rolling. Um, Aaliyah Finnegan and Connor McLean, LSU gymnast, uh, part of the G team as well. They'll be in studio with us in about 15 minutes. Shay Dixon, uh, we normally talk to Shay in hour two on Tuesdays. He was good enough to be flexible and jump up earlier in the show with us today. Join us now. How are you, Shady? I'm doing well. How are you, Matt? Man, I'm doing awesome. Um, let's start with the, the great news else you got over the weekend. Tyler Miller, big-time offensive lineman. Uh, what can you tell us about him? Yeah, it's coming out of Laurel, Mississippi, so South Mississippi. And um, anytime you get into Mississippi and snag uh, a guy who's ranked as the number two prospect in Mississippi and on three is a big deal. Uh, we've known over the years, it doesn't matter how good Ole Miss or State are or have been each year to year, uh, they usually hold down that state pretty well. So to go in there and nab uh, the second best player is is huge. Uh, and obviously, look, Laurel outside of Hattiesburg isn't that far of a drive from Baton Rouge. So 
Uh, they got in the mix early, and uh, Brad Davis has been on a roll here. Obviously, they uh, have some connections in the area with Donovan Tate. Their recruiting specialist is a Hattiesburg High, a fellow Hattiesburg High grad, uh, myself as well. So uh, he put in some work on this one, and ultimately Miller came in last weekend, Matt, for the junior day, and committed, and then on Sunday, a week later, announced it, and uh, he is uh, on, on three, a top 32 prospect, so that puts him in five-star range, uh, regardless of position, but the number one interior offensive lineman, so combo of guard and centers, uh, is considered to be the best prospect in the country, and that gives LSU's number one class 11 commitments, and four of them ranked to number one at their position, quarterback, running back, receiver, and now interior of the line, so doesn't get much better than how they started. Shay, is there any precedent for that, that four players number one at their, their position in their class? We don't think so, not in the modern era, which would be considered really the past little more than 20 years, um, you know, since online recruiting sites have become a big thing and rankings, um, you know, dating back to the magazines, I'm not sure. Uh, but we had thought about that when LSU landed, you know, Bryce Underwood, the number one quarterback, Harlan Berry, the number one running back, and DeCorey Moore, the number one receiver. Uh, and our national team looked into it, and it was the first time we found that that had happened. So certainly, toss in a number one player at any other position on offense, um, and now you've got an interior offensive lineman. Uh, no, they're in they're in unprecedented or uncharted waters here. Is this a guy? When so I keep looking at the 2025 offensive line and realize you're going to lose four starters from this year's team. So so the 2025 group is going to look completely different. Is Tyler Miller a guy that could realistically? play as a freshman would that be an expectation we'll see um i mean he's a, a freaky athlete he's strong he's got good size I mean, he's six five three ten already we'll see how he looks as a junior but i think with what brad davis has done yes you're having major turnover uh, as you know you could start dj chester at center this year and in theory lose all four of the other starting offensive linemen we'll see what happens um you know come a year from now but They've got um, guys at Tyree Adams is something they feel good about uh, as a backup offensive tackle right now, uh, among others. We're seeing DJ Chester move into the rotation, and they signed uh, some big name guys. Weston Davis is a five star. Uh, they went with six offensive line signees this past cycle. They already have three now and are starting to, to load up on even more big time targets coming in for visits. So I get the sense that Brad Davis sees what everybody sees. and. Hey, the room's going to turn over. They've recruited well year over year. But uh, this past cycle, and I think this one, when they signed six, and now they already have three committed, uh, that they'll go heavy on the O-line so that you've had a couple of years where you know, you've brought in 11, 12 uh, new guys that you feel pretty good about and, and develop them and play them from there. Shay, what else is, uh, what else is ahead on the offensive line for LSU? Well, Lamont Rogers uh, visits this weekend, as does Micah DeBose. Uh, and both those guys uh, are guys we've talked about uh, as potential commits uh, for LSU, at least putting them on commit watch. DeBose is, has sort of been on commit watch for a bit. He took a visit to Auburn. Now he's coming over to LSU. Um, and Lamont Rogers has kind of visited a number of schools. He's coming out of Texas. Uh, but both guys, uh, LSU leads the way on the on three recruiting prediction machine. So, uh, the ridge could get richer here mm. soon uh, if Brad Davis is, you know, pushing these guys to get in the boat and get your spot with three commits already in. Uh, it won't shock me at all uh, if they continue to add to it. And Solomon Thomas, one of the best tackles in the country, he'll be by this weekend as he makes about four or five visits. So um, kudos to a Baton Rouge native and what the longest tenured member of the staff, I guess, right now, and, and Brad Davis, who's on a roll with a line. Why, one of the things, and Shea Dixon's with us on Twitter, at Shea Dixon uh, on 3, the Bengal Tiger. One of the things that uh, when Tyler Miller committed, I, I saw the, the, the piece out on 3, multiple times he spoke specifically by name about Brad Davis. What is it, Shea, if you could elaborate about Brad Davis, that has made him so effective? I, mean, I just think it's his personality combined with a very straightforward approach. I mean, we've been to practices, right, Matt? I mean, you mm -hmm. see how he coached the team up. And these guys go out there and they take visits. For instance, Tyler Miller, and he was there for practice. And, you know, he's sat in on team meetings. So they get a feel for him on that side, and then they talk to him as someone who is just recruiting them. Uh, and as obviously, if you met Brad Davis, a very down-to-earth guy, Baton Rouge native, 
uh, moved back here, um, helped you know, take care of his parents, obviously, when he first got back. Uh, family man. I think all of that sort of shines through uh, as a guy who's just kind of in it for the kids and loves developing players and uh, has a pretty good track record. So um, once Brad Davis sort of gets in there, and, and look, kudos to the people around him. He surrounds himself with good O-line personnel, people, assistants, to where uh, as a bit of a team effort, obviously led by him, uh, they've yielded nothing but big results, and everybody seems to uh, enjoy him as a recruiter, and then once they get on campus, they speak highly of him as a coach. Um, Shay, whenever um, I look at this class, which has been so impressive, right, the 2025 class that we're talking about, um, the one thing that gives me a smidge of pause, I mean, look, it's the number one class in the country. They're doing unprecedented things. The one thing, though, that's obvious is of the 11 commits, eight are on the offense. There's only three defensive commits so far, and clearly LSU was bad defensively a year ago. Um, what's going on as far as recruiting for 2025 on the defensive side? Yeah, I think we're seeing a bit of um, the test study right now on, on maybe how recruits often view as a whole uh, good and bad, right? And LSU's had two Heisman winners in five seasons. They put together the number one offense in college football this past year. They've got Justin Jefferson and Chase and these guys tearing up the NFL. Uh, DeCorey and Moore, their five-star receivers, says, you know, Odell to all these guys have sort of been as idols. And when you're having great success on offense, I think that's attracted Bryce Underwood, the best quarterback in America. I mean, if LSU isn't winning two Heisman in five years, and putting together the number one offense in college football, are they getting Bryce Underwood? Like about, I would think their chances go down. So the success they've had there, um, and combined with some pretty good recruiting, uh, has has provided what more than half the commitments in the class, and and a lot of the top heavy guys. I think defensively, part of what we're viewing is, yeah, sure, kids can say, hey, look, if I come early. Uh, I could play, you know, they may throw me in early. I could be in the two deep. They need help. That is a pitch, but you're not going to have some major flood of guys jumping on board because of that. Like you would an offense where it's, Hey, I see you got number one player at every position and y'all have the best offense and y'all have highs and winners. Like I'm in it. You got to kind of buckle in and recruit on defense and what they've been on staff two months now, everybody on defense is brand new when it comes to position coaches. So, I think as time goes on, we're already seeing Corey Raymond, Bo Davis, uh, Blake Baker, all of these guys, Baker landing a commitment from Charles Ross. They got Jabori Antoine out of Westgate after losing some Westgate guys. So uh, we've seen some uh, guys start to pop, but I think it's really, Matt, they put that board together and said, here's the guys we want. And, uh, you know, Corey wants a different type of a DB than maybe LSU has been recruiting. And the same for Bo Davis on the D-line. And there's nuances to linebackers. So, uh, I think they've got a feel for who they want to go after now, and maybe the defensive run really comes with commitments in late spring to summer. Speaking of which, Shay, last thing, um, who could pop next? I mean, you mentioned some of the offensive linemen. Is there anybody on the defensive side we should be keeping an eye out for here uh, in the, the near upcoming future? Yeah, you know, I think we've always said James Simon, right, the running back out of Calvary Baptist. Uh, Zion Williams, uh, if you want to talk about D lineman, is a kid out of Lufkin who was really considered a very heavy lean to Texas because of Bo Davis. So when Bo Davis got here, he starts recruiting him, and he's made multiple trips to Baton Rouge now. So um, he's one to keep an eye on, I think, defensively. Uh, but I think that if we're talking next commit, I just I could see it continue to be offense, and I think in a way because of the numbers game, if a line is starting to fill up. You've got big O-line visitors coming like Micah DeBose, like Lamont Rogers, and others. Uh, if they get the green light and press them to commit, uh, I could see more guys getting on board and that position group starting to kind of really fill up and, and be close to done. He is Shea Dixon on three, the Bengal Tiger. Catch him on Twitter at Shea Dixon. Shady, you're the best. Thanks so much, man. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Matt. All right, all the best. We appreciate you. It's after further review. We're brought to you by our friends over at First South Farm Credit. If you're thinking of buying land, your first call should be to First South Farm Credit. FirstSouthLand.com. That's FirstSouthLand.com. Uh, at First South Farm Credit, they've been helping Louisianians buy land since 1916. How about this? They offer a patronage refund because they are a member-owned cooperative. And they don't sell your loan, by the way. Uh, 
they, as a member-owned cooperative, share profits with their members. So just for lending with First South Farm Credit, you will get a you will get a check every year as part of the patronage refund at First South Farm Credit. And they also offer note modification, which essentially is a refi when rates come down, and they'll call you. It's funny, I was talking to Tim over there a while back. He said they've had customers, clients in the past say, oh, you know, BS, whatever. No, no, no. They will, if rates drop, they will call you and say, hey, we can save you money. It's First South Farm Credit. I mean, you don't stay in business for more than 100 years if you're not doing something right. Your first call should be to First South Farm Credit. FirstSouthLand.com. That's FirstSouthLand.com. All right, y'all. Uh, it's after further review. We're glad to have you aboard with us. Such a busy time. I love the spring. The spring sports calendar is amazing. Uh, the LSU basketball team uh, in the NIT today, uh, this evening. The baseball team playing tonight as well. Uh, the women's basketball team in the NCAA tournament on Friday. And this weekend, uh, the LSU gymnasts are going to be participating in the SEC championships at the Smoothie King Center in New Orleans. We'll uh, address it from both ends of the spectrum. Uh, upperclassman Aaliyah Finnegan, true freshman Connor McLean, members of the G-Team, they'll be in studio with us next here on AFR. AFR. Love telling you about Glow Resources. G-L-O, glowresources.com. They are complete employer solutions over at Glow Resources. If you have been caught in the hiring rat race since COVID, especially since COVID, you need to call our friends over at Glow Resources. Remember, Glow Resources can service any business anywhere in the country or the world. Look, they've got offices in Baton Rouge, in New Orleans, and Dallas, and Miami. Offices all over. But no matter where your business is, Glow Resources can help. And the best thing about Glow Resources is they judge themselves. They rate themselves based on retention. And they have a 93% retention rate. It's how long their employees stay with their customers, you, the business owner. And if for whatever reason it doesn't work, they'll find you a replacement for free or offer you a prorated refund. What do you have to lose? Start being more efficient with Glow Resources. G-L-O, glowresources.com. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared toward seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. BRAC teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. 
It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. It really turns her on She's always staring at me While I'm chugging along She likes the way it's pulling While we're tilling up the land She's even kind of crazy about After further review, powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. All right, rolling along here, Tuesday edition of AFR, and glad to have you aboard with us. All throughout this year, we've been thrilled uh, to have members of the G team, so many different sports represented, come into studio with us, hang out to get to know some of these student athletes, and two young ladies that have made a huge impact uh, this year on the LSU gymnastics team, our junior Aaliyah Finnegan and freshman Connor McLean, who join us. Ladies, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing awesome. So, uh, SEC championships this weekend. Y'all have the day off today? Yes. All right, so, Ali, I'll start with you. What do you do, since you're the veteran, what do you do on a day off when you don't have to go to the gym? Well, we actually do have to go to the gym in the morning. So that's, Doesn't feel like a day off. 7 a.m., we'll do a little bit of a stretch and roll out, and then some sort of treatment afterwards, and then we're off for the rest of the day. So, it's, so you're not having practice, per yes. se. It's just kind of like keeping the legs moving a right. little bit. Right, yeah. absolutely. Is this, kind of for you as a freshman, how does this uh, schedule compared to what you would have been doing just coming up in competitive gym but not competing in college? It's honestly weird because I'm in the gym less, but I'm in the gym more because so much extra stuff. And then going to class is definitely new for me, and I'm always somewhere doing some either school or gym. So What was – what walk me through, Connor, because I think a lot of people realize when you get into like into USA Gymnastics and into that pipeline, right, it becomes your life. I mean, you kind of have to, yes. like, at what point would you say, both of you, like, you really had to commit to saying, all right, I'm all in on, on this path, right? What age? Like, six, seven? It's young, right? Right. I would say for me, I was a little bit older, but older as in, like, sixth or seventh grade, I'd say. So, okay. probably, like, 12, 13 12, 13? What about you? I was definitely on the younger side. I was six years old when I yeah, committed. Yeah, right. So, that's yeah. that's kind of thing, right? I mean, you hear about these stories. Like, if you're going to really make a push to think, I could be in the Olympics someday, you got to start early. So, like what? What was Connor? What was life like for you? Bef like walk me through a day before you got to college. What was a day like for you? I was in the gym at eight a.m. Or actually, I was on the track at seven a.m. And then I was in the gym from eight a.m. to six p.m. And then I would do school afterwards. It's kind of amazing. So is so so college probably feels easier for you. Yes, definitely. I would imagine. <laughs> yes. Um, for both of you, we're gonna talk a lot about the SEC championships coming up this weekend. Regionals coming. We'll get to all that here in a second. But uh, obviously, both of you are partnered with Gordon as well. What, uh, Aaliyah, let me start with you, because you've seen this transition just in your time at LSU sure. with, with NIL coming to be. Um, what's it been like to have an opportunity like this to work with Gordon? Absolutely. I think working with Gordon has been great. It gives a lot of exposure to you know not only gymnastics, but for female athletes as a whole. I think they all have a great opportunity to be able to, you know, shed some light on, you know, things that, you know, such things as like football or men's basketball, they don't necessarily need that extra push. So I think it's really important that Gordon's making, making sure that extra push is there for all the female sports. Do, um, do you feel like when you have an NIL deal and you're not just representing LSU, but now you're representing a business, a brand as well, it, does that change the way you approach your day to day at all, either on social media or when you're competing or anything like that? Not necessarily. I'd say that the brands that I do or companies that I do work with, they pretty much align with the things that I'm already doing for my day to day, which definitely makes it a lot easier to just kind of make that smooth transition. Yeah. Paul, can you can you pull up the uh, this on the back screen? So this is the video you did over at uh, at Gordon's office. We got on the back screen. What was this like to go do the shoot and the sit down <laughs> at the handstand? Do the shoot and the sit down with like with Gordon and the team? What was that? What was that experience like? Absolutely, it was so much fun. It was super laid back, and they were really just you know picking apart my story and it was awesome to be able to just sit down and 
for me to explain everything that's happened, for me to be you know, in that specific chair in that specific moment. And I think it was just a great opportunity to be able to share my story. Now, part of your story is you're, at, you're going to Paris. You're going to compete in the Olympics this summer. So congratulations, by Thank the way. You. That's amazing. <laughs> so you're going to compete for the Philippines. Correct. Can you uh, walk us through like how that, that came to be, like what the, the qualifying was like for to be able to go to the Olympics, represent the, the Philippines, which is your, your mom's home country. Correct. Is that right? Okay. Correct. So my mom is born and raised in the Philippines, and she came over to the U.S. And I started competing for the Philippines after my freshman year, so 2022. And I wasn't really sure if that was kind of a route that I wanted to take. I was really kind of going back and forth with that. But the summer after, after 2023, this following season, I really wanted to make a push to those bigger competitions. And it's kind of like a series of competitions that you have to go to. And mm -hmm. it's like the pool gets smaller and smaller of like who qualifies essentially. And so, you know, I went to one competition, then I went to the world championships, which essentially is like your Olympic trials for, you know, the smaller countries who don't really have like a whole team, like Team USA per se. So I went to this competition, it was in Belgium, and it was October, so like right in the middle of the semester and like right in the middle <laughs> of grind season, basically. And I went there for two weeks and I took one of our assistant coaches with, a, with us. And it was, it was such an incredible journey just to be going there and being able to, you know, hit all of my events like I knew how to do. And ultimately we got the, we got the notification at about 11 p.m. And I'm screaming in my hallway <laughs> and I'm with my mom and my sister and my coach. And it was such a special moment to be able to share with them. I mean... To get to go to the Olympics has got to be like, a, I mean, a, an incredible, like lifelong dream, a thing Absolutely. that you've worked for. Absolutely. And Connor, you, you are going to the U.S. Olympic trials this summer to try to earn a spot on the, on Team USA yes. to go to Paris. Yes. That's so, cool. okay. So let's walk through that because you're, you're competing right now for LSU. And I would imagine uh, the routines, some of the skills, it's got to be different than what you're, than what you're training every day at LSU. So how much of a transition, how difficult is that to go from your season here at LSU to then, I would imagine, just immediate turnaround. Now you're getting ready for the Olympic mm -hmm. trials. It's definitely going to be difficult, but I knew I wanted to train for the Olympics before I even came to school. So I've been training my um, other skills um, just during season on, like, our lighter days, per se. Like, I just train my harder skills on our light days and then do my routines for college on our, like, real practice days. So I mix in the both of them, but... It's going to be hard to transition to my harder routines after nationals. Can you, um, for someone who, like, I think a lot of people, and especially the success of the LSU program, has opened up and exposed uh, LSU gym to so many people who maybe were, like, once every four-year watchers at the Olympics. Does, does that make sense? Like, a lot of people would be casual gymnastics observers, and they'd get into it for the Olympics, and then they'd watch again. Well, LSU gym has become so popular. By the way, we saw today that LSU gymnastics led the nation in attendance this year. So yeah, you can go. You can go. Congra <laughs> yeah. Like I mean, Utah had had held that distinction for for years. Right. So congrats for that. Um, but whenever people watch, sometimes even casually, it's hard to to discern. Okay, what's going to get me a tenth of a point deduction? What, what you know was your toe pointed? Did you wobble? Like some of the things are easy to see, some of them are not. So specifically for your routines when you're training for college, as opposed to the 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 Olympic trials, what would be a difference that someone, if you're watching, they may notice in your routines from college to the to the Olympic trials? In college, we do like three skills in our routines. It's really quick and fast, but, and I feel like our form is like so much better and like you see so many cleaner routines and like it's easy to notice that, but in elite, um, it's just so many skills put together and it's like a 45 second routine on bars and like you take up the full minute and a half on beam and like we're always on the beam and like our form isn't as good and like our skills just like harder and like it's not as perfect I would say. Yeah, it's um, a lot of people may not realize like you're timed on on beam. Like yeah. you if you go long enough, you may get you know <laughs> I mean. Um, uh, Aliyah Finnegan, Connor McLean are in studio with us for a couple more minutes. Part of the G team, we've been thrilled obviously to be partnered with Gordon here. Uh, it's been so great for us and so many athletes, men and women across many different sports, and we're glad to have both of you in studio. Let's talk about SEC championships this weekend. We were kind of talking off air that. You know, and watching the team, this kind of feels like, I mean, LSU's had some great teams and some amazing gymnasts. This feels like the team that maybe has the most, like, realistic chance of winning a national championship. Uh, do you all feel that way? Did you talk about that internally? Aaliyah, let me start with you since you're the, the veteran. Absolutely. It definitely was one of our goals, you know, starting at the beginning of the year all the way back to August, whenever we first got together as a group. And I think each time we go out there is more or less kind of like a dress rehearsal for the actual show that we want to happen. So, for instance, you know, this week, this Saturday coming up for SECs, and then 
further down the road for the national championship. And this year, I really think we're all just on the same page. We know what we want, and we're going to go after it. You've battled an injury this year as well. How are you feeling physically? I'm feeling great, honestly. I'm glad that we kind of took a slower route to be able to get to back to a where I am and really just go full speed ahead for the postseason. Was this week, did I hear correctly, this past week was the first time you did bars all year? Is that Correct. right? Yes. So how did you feel? Like, it had to be a little, um, I, like, was there any trepidation get, getting up there for the first time just to see in competition how, how you'd react? Not necessarily. I feel like I've been doing this sport a long time that yeah. it, even though it's been a while since I actually was out in competition, you know, it's just we try to not make the moment bigger than it needs to yeah. be. Connor, did you feel coming in um, on a team that is, that is so deep and talented that as a freshman that you were going to be able to have the impact that, that you have, like, right away? I did. <laughs> did you? Why? Why? Because she's, she's in, an incredible athlete. She's so talented all around, and we knew that anywhere that we would put her in, that she was going to flourish. Yeah. So Me, can not that. at all. <laughs> no, really? No, so I just came here to have fun, and then, I mean, my gymnastics, everyone says it speaks for itself, but I guess it's true in a sense. But I really just came here to have fun and like just do my gymnastics normally. Yeah, I love the modesty, by the way. Like uh, <laughs> y'all, y'all are, are ama obviously amazing at what you do, and it's been so fun to watch. So, what, um, what kind of are the processes right now? I mean, obviously you want to go this weekend. I mean, you want to win every meet. Obviously, you want to win the SEC championship this weekend. But, I mean, what what is the process now for you all collectively as a team through SECs, through regionals? Hopefully, get back to the to the final four and win it. Yeah, I think right now we're really just focusing on maintaining. There's not necessarily a whole lot that we need to, you know, we don't need to up our numbers. We don't need to up our weights in the weight room. It's really just maintaining where we're at right now because we're in a really great place. We've set ourselves up well for going into this postseason. So I think if we just keep doing what we're doing, we're going to be just fine. Connor, if you could win a national championship at LSU or make – the U.S. Olympic team, which which would you, which, which, which would you, if you had to pick one, which would you pick? I can't pick. <laughs> <laughs> I won't, I won't press you any further on it. Uh, it's been great to have you all in. Again, Aliyah Finnegan and Connor McLean from the LSU Gymnastics Squad, part of the G team. Of course, Gordon's been awesome, an awesome partner for us and, uh, and for these young ladies as well. Congrats on your success so far. It's been a lot yeah. of fun watching this team. We'll be uh, rooting for, we'll be rooting for hopefully both of you. Uh, in Paris this summer as well. Thank you so Thank much. You. It's our pleasure. Uh, Aaliyah Finnegan and Connor McLean from the LSU Gymnastics Squad. They'll be in New Orleans for the SEC Championships this weekend. Of course, a lot of people will be wearing purple and gold and be cheering them on. Let's now get a quick break. We'll come back and wrap up hour number one. AFR. Oddly enough, I actually get to talk about Gordon right now. Get Gordon and get it done. No, seriously, look, it's on the sheet right there. Gordon McKernan. Uh, get right. Gordon and get it done. It's Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys. Like we've been telling you, for more than 30 years, Gordon's been helping injured people in our state. If you've been injured, it's not your fault. You know what to do. Get Gordon and get it done. Don't go it alone. You need representation. They're great people. It's been one of the great pleasures to get to know Gordon throughout this whole process. You see him on the billboards. You've seen TV ads forever. But when you get to know the man, that's been a big part of this whole process is understanding Gordon's a great man. He's a family man, and he loves his state, and he loves to give back to the state where he can and how he can. So part of Gordon's firm is Gordon Gibbs, which is the charitable arm of Gordon McKernan Injury Attorney. So if you go to gordongibbs.com, that's gordongibbs.com. Again, gordongibbs.com. You can see all the ways that Gordon and his firm, they're charitable giving back to our communities. But as we always say, if you need an attorney, go to getgordon.com. It's getgordon.com. Get Gordon and get it done. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. 
Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking $22,500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking $22,500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also... She thinks my tractor, she thinks my tractor's sexy. It really turns her on. She's always staring at me. After further review, powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. We got um, contract terms for Kalen DeBoer over at Alabama. You see this? Uh, he's going to make $10.875 million here year one. Uh, I'm sure that's an average of $10.875 million. Um, he will make $10 million in the first year of his deal. It'll escalate throughout the eight years of the contract. Eight years. By comparison, the seven-year contract Matt McMahon got, we thought, was massive. This is an eight-year deal for Kalen DeBoer there in Tuscaloosa. But it'll top out at $11.75 million, which I know I say that kind of casually. It rolls off the tongue like it's no big deal. Of course, it's an, an insane amount of money. Um, but I'll tell you today the same thing I said when Texas A&M first hired Jimbo and had paid him a 10-year, $75 million deal. And everybody went, $75 million! And the thing that I said then was, yeah, $75 million seems enormous, but by the time you get to year 10 of that deal, and it's averaging out at $7.5 million, he'll be the 30th highest paid coach in the country. Now, the problem they made is Jimbo had a nine-win season in the COVID year, and they gave him a whole new deal. <laughs> Idiots! Good! Um... That's why he got stuck with a $76 million bill for a coach that stunk. Um, anyway, so by the time, look, at 11.75, if you get to the end of this contract with Kalen DeBoer, $11 million is going to feel like a drop in the bucket. If he's good, they're going to extend him, and this deal will be, uh, will be obsolete. But the most interesting part of this contract, and I keep waiting for this. So th this is, by the way, it's less about Alabama or Kalen DeBoer. Whatever. It's, I keep waiting for the buyouts in coaches' contracts to normalize. Eventually, that bubble going to burst. Eventually, you're going to see some type of protections from the schools. Yes, the coaches are going to get large dollar amounts, and they, they should. I think a lot of them are underpaid, given the return that you get to the university, the communities as a whole. But Kalen DeBoer... His contract is 90% guaranteed, which is the same as Brian Kelly's, by the way, but there's no mitigation, meaning 
if he goes and gets, if Alabama fires him without cause and he goes and gets another job, mitigation means you would offset the cost of the buyout with whatever his new deal was. So hypothetically, let's say hypothetically, Kalen DeBoer gets fired, he goes, gets a new job, and they pay him $5 million a year. Well, if Bama was going to owe him $10 million, they'd owe him half of that because it would be offset by the $5 million a year that he's getting at his new place. There's no mitigation here, meaning they, no matter what, they will owe him 90% of this. Over eight years, they will owe him 90% of this contract, which is incredible. And it's, a, I mean, congrats to, I would assume, um, to Kalen DeBoer's agent uh, for, you know, I, who I would assume is Jimmy Sexton. I don't know that, but he seems like he's got all the big name coaches uh, for doing a, a deal that's going to make Kalen DeBoer a really, really rich man. Uh, Kalen DeBoer. He's got his deal done there at uh, at Alabama. Hey, we're brought to you by Pure Restoration, pure-restoration.com. Um, we'll get to Mel Kuyper's latest mock draft post-free agency coming up right after Sports Center. I want to remind you, though, about Pure Restoration. Got an email yesterday from a gentleman who said, Scone, what's the mold thing you always talk about? So I shot him the link, actually sent him Ty Harvison's phone number directly to be in touch with him. It's that easy. If you have a mold problem or think you might, Yo, we live in the mold capital of the world. South Louisiana, it's wet and it's humid. Breeding ground for mold. If you have black mold or think you might, you need pure restoration. Licensed by the state of Louisiana, mold remediation services. They'll come in and spray their their patented non-toxic dry fog. And in a matter of hours, as soon as the the fog dissipates, you're back in free and clear of mold. It's pure restoration. Pure-restoration.com. That's pure-restoration.com, or just message me and say, hey, Scone, what's the mold thing you always talk about? It's pure restoration. Okay, it's after further review. We're glad you're aboard with us here on this uh, Tuesday edition of AFR. When we come back, uh, Feinswag makes his return. He'll pick Purdue to win the national championship, and we'll get to uh, Kuiper's latest mock draft. AFR. It was a humid day Barefoot children play Looking for the summer shade Time to slip Brack teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy-duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, 
and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Center. I'm Christine Lisi. Breaking NFL news from ESPN's Adam Schefter. Former Chargers receiver Mike Williams has agreed to a one-year deal with the Jets worth up to $15 million, so New York adding a much-needed compliment to Garrett Wilson. Brown side newly acquired receiver Jerry Judy to a three-year extension, $58 million, $41 million guaranteed at signing. 13 hours from now, the Major League Baseball season will open up in Seoul with the Dodgers and Padres. Game also marking the debut in Dodger Blue for Shohei Otani, part of that dream L.A. lineup. ESPN MLB analyst Jessica Mendoza. 6 a.m. cannot come quick enough tomorrow because we got Mookie Betts at the top of the lineup. Then you got Shohei right after him with that swing, that presence in the batter's box. Then Freddie Freeman. By the way, one, two, three MVPs we have never seen. Three MVPs back to back to back in their prime in a lineup in the history of the sport. First pitch, Dodgers Padres, 6 a.m. Eastern tomorrow, ESPN. NBA Cavs star Donovan Mitchell sidelined at least one week after undergoing a procedure on a nasal fracture. Hey, it's your resident Super Bowl champ, Chris Candy, coming up Wednesday with all the shuffling we've seen at quarterback. I'll tell you which teams are headed for QB competitions. It's Unsportsmanlike, 6 a.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2, and ESPNU. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. Off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. AFR powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. I'm Matt. You are a loser, Matt. Hey, shut up, kid. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. Music. And Mr. Toby Tomplay. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there and make it a good one. Lee Feinswalk, uh, he's been in the Middle East playing water polo. Uh, he'll be back. Talk about beer. And uh, actually, he'll pick Purdue to win the national championship. And Lee told me that he actually wrote about a new LSU basketball arena in the 1980s. Now, Lee's old. Keep in mind. <laughs> he is old. But just to illustrate how long this conversation has been going... So we'll have that uh, that convo with Lee here in a bit. Remember, you can always text the show in the 225-396-4400, uh, Ashton Perrette said, hey, Matt, when are we going to get to hear Ocho? Happy to report. I did text with Ocho about a week ago, and he and his wife built a new home, and they were moving in. And, uh, and so I said, no worries. 
I'll circle back in a few weeks and we'll put something on the calendar. It's gonna. When I asked him if he was still down for it, he replied, "Expletive, yeah." So he's in. Like, I, I and do we we believe him? Yes. Like, there's no. You believe? I believe Ocho. Well, I I believe him. Yeah. I mean, if he's still doing, like, he's still communicating with you, you have no choice but to believe him. Right. And and, and he's him. Like yeah. the man changed his name from Johnson to Ocho legally. Changed his name from Johnson to Ocho Cinco so he could put Ocho Cinco on the back of a jersey and sell it. Like. I have no doubt he's down for a good time. So it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when. We'll get it done. And then Greg Lane has a question for you, Muse. Um, today is uh, the 19th. Um, well, actually, it's March 19th. I, th I think Greg might be off here. He said, uh, hey, Matt, with 420 approaching, uh, wondered what Muso has uh, any plans to celebrate. Mexico, Colorado? Uh, you're about a month away. About a month away. Um. Muse? Yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to be at a baseball game that day if, if we're being brutally honest here. I mean, yeah. Just make sure you're careful. Make sure well, I mean, I'll, I'll be fine. Yeah, uh, well, actually, LSU's at Missouri. I'll be watching a baseball game oh, that day. Oh, that makes way more. That makes it way easier, huh, Muse? Huh? Huh? Makes I mean, I'll just, I'll just be sitting there watching the game. It'll be great. Easier? Yeah. You yeah, don't have to worry necessarily. I, I wouldn't have to worry. What do I have to worry about? Well, I mean, you I, know, if the, uh, if the police come by asking them if you have a prescription for that, you know? 420. I, mm. I think you know what we're talking about. Bruce. I think you know. All right. Um, it's after further review. Uh, Mel Kuyper's got his uh, latest mock draft out. And it's Mel Kuyper's first mock draft since free agency began. And notably, you've had some changes because of quarterbacks, right? Uh, the Atlanta Falcons signing Kirk Cousins means they ain't drafting a quarterback. If you're a Saints fan, LSU fan... Heck yeah, that means no Jaden Daniels to Atlanta. Um, Pittsburgh has acquired Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. This most certainly means that the Bears are going to stay at one, make that pick, and it's going to be Caleb Williams. So some of uh, free agency has cleared the deck a bit for what we can expect. So Mel Kuyper's put out his latest mock draft post-free agency, and before I delve into it, I'm, I love what this means for New Orleans. I'll get there in a second. So he does have Caleb Williams go, going number one to the Bears, as we all expect. Jaden Daniels, two to the Commanders. He has Drake May, three to the New England Patriots. And then Marvin Harrison Jr., four to the Cardinals. And Malik Neighbors, one spot behind him, five to the Chargers. Now, this is where I think it starts to get interesting. Roma Dunze, six to the Giants. Joe Walt, the big offensive lineman from Notre Dame, 7 to Tennessee. Dallas Turner, the al uh, outside linebacker from Alabama, 8 to the Falcons. Jared Verse, 9 to the Bears. Uh, Brock Bowers, 10 to the Jets. And then the next two picks are the ones, in my opinion, that are going to set the table for New Orleans. It's Minnesota and Denver, 11 and 12. Minnesota no longer has Kirk Cousins. Denver no longer has Russell Wilson. Those are two teams that now we all can and should widely assume are going to take a quarterback with their first-round picks at 11 and 12, respectively. And what that means for New Orleans is if five quarterbacks, if five quarterbacks go before New Orleans selects at 14, there is going to be an amazing value player for you at 14 because you're not picking a quarterback. Saints are not, we, we know this. I mean, I'm, I'm not telling you something you don't know. The Saints are not picking a quarterback at 14. But if you've got five quarterbacks off the board before you pick, that means somebody awesome is going to fall to you. Kuyper's got J.J. McCarthy going to the Vikings at number 11, which, oh my God, what a waste of a pick that would be. Clip it, put it on, at freezing cold, old takes expose me on Twitter, whatever y'all want to do. J.J. McCarthy, 11 to the Vikings, would be a total travesty for that organization. And then Bo Nix, 12 to Denver. Maybe Sean Payton can make chicken salad out of chicken poop with Bo Nix, but I would L-O-L, I would R-O-T-F-L if Denver takes Bo Nix 12th overall. I lived through bad Bo in Auburn. You ain't fooling me because you were up at Oregon where you got sacked one time all year behind a great offensive line and you were in an offense where you got rid of the ball right as it was snapped. He ain't fooling me. Bo Nix, uh, please. Hey, not my problem. Anyway, J.C. Latham, 13 to the Raiders. And I want to remind you, I want to remind you that 
a couple of weeks ago, I made my bold proclamation. Before I, I was gone to New York last week, I made my bold proclamation of what I, for me, for me, was my dream scenario for the New Orleans Saints in this year's NFL draft. Let me remind you what my dream scenario was. Uh, I want to see the Saints draft Olu Fashanu, the offensive tackle out of Penn State. That's it. That's my pick. That's my dream scenario. Well, Mel Kuyper, in his latest mock draft, his first mock draft post beginning of free agency at number 14, has granted my wish. Mel Kuyper has the Saints taking Olu Fashanu, 14 overall. I would absolutely love this pick. Let me be very clear. There is no sure thing in the NFL draft. Nothing is a sure thing. Chase Young was the number two overall pick. He was a freak show at Ohio State. There was talk about him potentially being the number one overall pick. To sit, should they pass on a quarterback and chase, take Chase Young because they transcended defensive end? And he's had a rough start to his career. There is no such thing as a sure thing in the NFL draft. There are minimized risks, but Fashanu is 21 years old. He's an athletic freak. He would have been a top 10 pick in the draft a year ago had he come out, according to Kuyper. Decided to go back to school and is in a deep draft. I gave you the example of Brian Thomas. If Brian Thomas were in last year's NFL draft, he would have been the first receiver off the board, would have been a top 15 pick. But Brian Thomas is in this draft with Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze, Keon Coleman. It is a loaded wide receiver draft class, so Brian Thomas is just going to go a little later than he probably should by virtue of the fact that he's in a really deep draft. That's Fashanu. Because potentially five quarterbacks could come off the board before the Saints pick. Five quarterbacks, and at least those three receivers I just mentioned to you. Harrison, Neighbors, Adunze. That's eight players right there that you know are coming off the board before you pick. Throw in Brock Bowers, Dallas Turner, Jared Verse. These players, like, all of a sudden, you see amazing value sitting there waiting for you at 14. And I think it's, I hope it's going to be Olu Fashanu. That's my dream scenario for New Orleans. I get it. I get it. You crap the bed with Trevor Penning. You took an offensive lineman. It hasn't worked out. Maybe you can salvage him as an interior player, but just because you missed with Penning doesn't mean you get to ignore the offensive line. You need a left tackle. This guy could be your franchise for the next decade. Mel Kuyper mocks him to New Orleans at 14, and I would absolutely love to see it. The one thing that's that's for certain is that in this draft, where you've got very likely... Five quarterbacks coming off the board before New Orleans picks. The Saints are going to have amazing value at 14, no matter what. If ever there was a year to just stay put and let the draft come to you, it's this one. Okay. It's after further review brought to you by Shaw Bills Tire and Auto Service. ShawBillsTire.com. ShawBillsTire.com. ShawBills, home of the Charlie's Dozen. A dozen benefits to you and your family when you buy tires at Shaw Bills. I want to remind you also that over at Shaw Bills, they've got a great deal running through the end of this month, through the end of March that I've been telling you about. So go take advantage of it if you haven't done so yet. If you're thinking of buying tires, you can get on by and take advantage of these great springtime specials. What I always encourage you to do is go to the website at ShawBillsTire.com, hit the Promotions tab at the top, and when you hit the Promotions tab at the top, you'll see all the current promotions where you can shop tires at the location nearest you, it's shabillstire.com, shabillstire.com. Buy name brand tires at wholesale prices. Bridgestone, Firestone, BF Goodrich, Michelin. It's all there for you at shabillstire.com. Name brand tires, wholesale prices, and they treat you like family at Shabill. Shabill's where we keep you rolling. All right, y'all, it's after further review. Um, Tyler Miller the offensive line commitment that LSU got over the weekend. He's going to be with us one hour from right now. So if you have to leave, come back. You're going to want to hear that conversation. When we come back, Lee Feinswalk, our long-lost old buddy, Lee Feinswalk, he'll be here with us. We'll talk about what it was like playing water polo in the Middle East and, uh, and beer. It's AFR.
AFR. Y'all, it got down to 37 degrees last night. <laughs> we had to turn the heater on last night. It's so ridiculous. But it's what we always know. You get into March, and usually there's that one last cold snap. You think spring has sprung, and there's one more cold snap. I think that's this right now. Anyway, you know the drill. The triple-digit temps, the relentless heat, it's right around the corner. It's bearing down on us here in Louisiana and in the Gulf South. Make sure your home central AC is ready. River City's one-hour air offers their preseason AC tune-up. You can mention the Moscona special. They'll save you 25 bucks off any system repair. The giant clock on the side. You got to remember this, y'all. The relentless heat of the summer. Make sure your AC is ready to roll through all of it. River City's one-hour air can help. 752 one where they're always on time or you don't pay a dime. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking $22,500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SEA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking $22,500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Brack teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. After further review, powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. Well, it's been a minute, but we welcome back from the Middle East. Where he competed in uh, old people water polo, which is just kind of gross. Uh, Lee Fines walk. Hey, Lee, how are you? How you doing, Matt? I'm awesome. It's been a long time. Yeah, has been. Uh, so, how was Cutter? Cutter was really interesting. Uh, the city of Doha is about 1.8 million, and only about 180 thousand Qatari people live there. Everybody else is expats, mostly oh. because of the oil business. Uh, 
and and technology. It's an incredibly modern city. You know, it's relatively new. The skyscrapers are very impressive. At night, when the lights went down, light shows like on almost every building. It was just spectacularly good. We were treated magnificently. I mean, they had a World Cup there. You know, putting on a big big uh, aquatics event wasn't that big of a deal. But there were so many things that were different because it's a Muslim country. And uh, I, I thought one of the, the the greatest examples of today's culture mixed with that was going to the old market and seeing uh, um, Muslims dressed in full garb, especially a woman wearing, um, I think they call it a baya, where it's all black, you know, from head to toe and you don't see anything and there's just slits mm -hmm. for their eyes. But this woman I was walking alongside of and she was holding her phone and FaceTiming her friend while she was walking and she had her phone attached to a portable battery, you know, while she was walking in the market with her kids in tow. Mm. Hey, you know, if you think about that, that's uh, kind of interesting. So isn't it, um, it, isn't, it was just way fun. And the water polo was great. Isn't it called, forgive, just forgive my ignorance if I get this wrong, that isn't it a, a, a hijab, hijab or hijab? Uh, the, the, I, I, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I, I could be... Um, just that might just be the headdress. Okay. I don't know. Did you feel unsafe? Yeah. Oh, never, never. Uh, okay. It's uh, in fact, uh, they, they, they even say that it's the safest city and country in the world. Um, we, the proximity to everything else that's going on right. badly in that part of the world, you know, gave you reason to pause a little bit, but you're so insulated there that uh no not at all okay. and uh you know i flew cotter airways on the way there and back and it was uh you know super super good experience as far as that part of it went uh, my, the food the food experience was not what i was hoping it would be and the best food i had i stayed at a marriott uh okay. marriott marquee big full service hotel okay fantastic property located in city center as part of a mall the one of the biggest malls you've ever seen with one of the greatest grocery stores i've ever seen there was a section, Matt, because we'll, we'll get to the beer part, but there was a section with the most non-alcoholic beers I've ever seen in my life. There must have been 30 different <laughs> non-alcoholic beers. The only place Sounds you get terrible. alcohol is in the restaurants in the hotel. Oh, man. But uh, where I was going with that is there was a food court, just like our food court. I mean, there literally was a McDonald's and a Hardee's and a Pizza Hut and a barbecue where where the, uh, the girls who worked there wore cowboy hats. But uh, – the places that, that were in there cooked fresh and you watched, I mean, everything in the, in the food court itself was fantastic. And that's, I had some of my best meals there and it made it very convenient. Well, so. I'm well, and again, this is just complete ignorance on my part. I've never been to the middle East. I mean, I, I feel like I know a little bit about the region, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's unrest. I mean, there's a literal war going on in the middle East. So I, I didn't. Yeah. And it's yeah. not it's not like it's a vast region of the world where you could say, well, you're in America. Well, New York and and San Francisco are, you know, a five hour flight away. So, yeah, you're in the same country, but you're not even remotely close to one another. I don't know how close you were to to what all is happening there. So but that's pretty cool. What about the What about the water polo? I, I would assume that no elderly people died this year in the pool. Well, uh, for those of you who haven't followed this before, Matt, of course, always gives me a hard time about this, and deservedly so. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and, and his final text to me that when we when I got back was, I'm glad you didn't die. And I, I said, well, thank you very much. Matt, we had we had 11 guys. No, on I our said, team. I'm glad you're alive. I'm looking at it. So I'm glad yes. you're alive. Yeah. Well, we had we had 11 guys on the team, which gives you four subs. One guy had heart problems right before we left and didn't come. So we had three Good. subs which is okay and manageable. Two guys got so sick the first day, they couldn't get out of bed for two days. So we yeah. had no subs for a couple of games. One guy actually had appendicitis and had an appendectomy in a Doha hospital. No. While we were there. Yes. And another buddy of mine on the team, one of the, our best players, hurt his shoulder so bad that he could not um, continue. I did not come out for our last three games. And I will tell you, I was as fatigued as I've ever been in my life. One just quick war story. Yeah. Second game, take a shot, miss. The follow through, I hit this German's head, the guy who was covering me. And mm -hmm. I said, ow. And he looked at me and it kind of stopped, I guess, because I kind of probably screamed. And I looked down, and I saw my ring finger was about 
um, considerably shorter than it's supposed to be. Oh no! And uh, oh, police! Oh, I see that picture. Thank you very much. And uh, you sent that was it to against me. the Slovakian team. You sent well, me the I picture. Did, I, well, it's good if you're watching on TV. Yeah, it's the real thing. So I said to the guy, "Damn!" Oh, I, you I mean I'm not show the picture? Looked, you sent me the picture the, of you the, in the water polo. Play pool and win the so, pool and the water polo. All right, that's it. So, so the German just looks at me because he didn't speak English. So I looked down at my finger, and the the, the second notch had gone up over the the, the and it was mm. turning, swelling and turning blue. Mm. And I just looked down, and I went, "Oh!" And I just pulled it straight out. It was weird. I don't know if you're supposed to do that, yes. but I just did it. Yes. And uh, kept on playing. I had to tape it the rest of the way, and it's still a little swollen and sore. But that, if that's the only thing that bad that happened to me, that was great. But yeah. thank you for asking. It was a way fun experience, and to be able. To do that at my age and still get to play and have a ball and travel like that and compete at a, you know, a high level within context, you know, kids my own age, it was fabulous. Of course. Uh, Lee Feinswag is our guest. I was just representing – were you representing the United States or was this club? Well, I guess – I mean, yeah, we were the only – you know, we were the U.S. team. But, uh, you know, we played in, in a pool, no pun intended, with a team from Italy, a team from Slovakia, two teams from Germany, another U.S. team. Uh, so, yeah, but it's it's not any different than like a kid's tournament in any sport where it's pay to play. It's not like a qualify. You know, hey, can you cobble together a team and pay the entry fee and get there? So two years from now, we'll be talking about this. We go to Singapore. Well, uh, I'm happy for I'm happy you're back. I'm glad it seemed like everything went well. That's that's fantastic. We'll hear about your beers in a moment. And yes, you are old. Mm -hmm. You are so old, as a matter of fact, that you were writing about a new arena at LSU in the 1980s. So, Lee, yeah. it looks like it's actually going to happen now. Well, yes. And that whole deal, I'm sorry, it stinks like a fish. There's just something crazy about it that you're going to tell the downtown arena, you can't have a big event for 30 years. That's not for me to decide. I, I won't be here in 30 years. And, and you know, the, uh, <laughs> but, but Matt, the two columns that I got destroyed the most for that I wrote when I was working at the newspaper, one, I'm still convinced was the right idea, was that they should have abolished the SWAC and just, and created an all Louisiana sports league based around football with all the division one a teams and one, I mean, one double a teams that we had at the time. And it would have been incredible. And people were like, how can, how can you, how can you do that? And I said, you know, why not? You know, anyway, that's here and there. So yeah. the other one was the idea that an aging tire tiger stadium and the worst basketball arena in the sec should both have been torn down in the eighties. They could have sold Tiger Stadium piece by piece for a zillion dollars. Think how much people would have paid just for a brick, a chair, anything. They And then built a 100,000-seat football stadium right there with a retractable roof, suitable for basketball, much like perhaps the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, and have a conference, room, conference center and a hotel. Uh, pe people were aghast. How could you even suggest such a thing? Well, now we have a football stadium that's basically four buildings cobbled together. That's finally over 100,000 people. Still the worst basketball arena in the SEC. And they built across campus a conference center and a hotel. Now, all these years later. <laughs> yeah. Now, all these years later, people are like, oh, oh, we ought to build us a big place to have sports on campus and in, and in Baton Rouge. Well, yeah, and have concerts. I mean, Matt, back in the day, did you ever go to any great concerts in the Assembly Center? You're a true visionary. Uh, I saw Sister Hazel at the Assembly Center. Uh, when was that? Oh, oh gosh. I, early 2000s? I mean, I saw, R I saw REM. I saw Elton John. Um, uh, Garth was here uh, in 96, uh, famously. But, yeah, but that was the era. And, Lee, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I, if, as I recall, there are two issues that really prohibit – I've talked about this so many times – over different uh, networks and formats. I mean, I did news for years before I even started doing sports, and this was this has been an ongoing topic. But two things: number one, proximity, like because Baton Rouge is smack dab between New Orleans and Lafayette, a lot of acts would would go to New Orleans and Lafayette and not Baton Rouge because there was enough space, right? You could get your your population to go to either one of the other. Uh, and then the other was the Maravich Center or on on campus. They couldn't sell beer. They they couldn't sell booze. On, on campus in, in at that venue. So a lot of 
Axe chose not to go there because you couldn't sell beer. And the River Center wasn't as desirable of a of a venue. No, true. And I've seen some wonderful shows in the River Center. Um, the only show I ever saw in the Cajun Dome, Stacy, my daughter, for her 13th birthday, took her to see Paula Abdul oh, in wow. the Cajun Dome. But I remember how great the sound was in there. It was a fantastic venue for a concert. Yeah, I saw but, uh, Aerosmith, the the, I saw, I saw Aerosmith at the Cajun Dome in 04. I saw Elton John at the Cajun Dome. I, I've been to I've been to more great, great acts at the Cajun Dome than I have at either venue in Baton Rouge. Yeah, well, I'd be all for anything that can bring big-time entertainment back to Baton Rouge, especially in the form of rock concerts. And for, for people who like other kinds of music, those two. <laughs> Besides just big outdoor country music festivals inside Tiger Stadium, yeah. um, he's Lee Feinswag, uh back from uh, from the Middle East where he's playing water polo and uh, still stumping for a new venue, which looks like it's actually going to happen. And I would assume Lee, uh, look with the the NCA tournament starting on Thursday, it's high time for our our annual uh, Final Four selection from you. So, do you want to go ahead and pick uh, pick Purdue real quick to get that out the way? And we can talk about beer. Matt, what was your first uh, year doing this show? How many years have you been actually over doing this show on this radio network? We started February 17th of 2010. So we just made 14 years. So for the 14th time in a row. <laughs> <laughs> I will pick Purdue to win the national championship. Actually, and what's so funny about the, that wait, is. Wait, 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 wait. Because you picked them in 2010, this would actually be the 15th time, correct? Because you have to count 2010. So this would be the 15th time Purdue. you picked Purdue. So last year, of course, they were the top seed, and they got upset in the first round, which was just incomprehensible. <laughs> and you and I, we, you know, this has become this running joke. I, I love the program. I don't even like Purdue. I don't even like, you know, it's like, but Matt Painter is has been the best young coach. Now he's an older great coach in America. They've had so many great players come through there. I thought for sure. Now, this year, they're the number one overall seed. Zach Eady is so good. And I've watched them play enough times to tell you they're not going to win the national championship. But I'm still thinking <laughs> okay, they're who's, too flawed. Who's, so, who's so your final four? The have you, oh, you haven't, the bracket. I haven't okay. even looked I haven't even looked at the bracket. I don't even know who they're, who's playing opposite them. I just knew that I would come on and tell you, <laughs> Purdue, okay. go Boilers. Boiler up. I could have sent you a picture of me in the boiler. <laughs> well, Lee's got Purdue. Uh, he has just given them the kiss of death. Uh, Purdue will be eliminated again far earlier than they should be. But uh, Lee, with, oh my gosh. with tradition, is uh, is going with uh, with Purdue. All right, and uh, with that, we will toast another March Madness and your safe return with some ice cold beer. Oh, what is the malted liquor? What gets you drunk or quicker? What comes in bottles or in cans? Beer. Can't get enough of it. Beer. How we really love it. Beer. Makes me think I'm a man. Beer. I could kiss and hug it, beer. but I'd rather chuck it. Got my belly out to here. Beer. I could not refuse it. Beer. I could really use a beer. 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 Take it away. All right, Matt, I got so many beers. I got to hurry up and bounce some of these off of you because, all right, number one, this little tiny one right here, the Zoni Pony Pub Pilsner from the Zoni Mash Project in New Orleans. It's it's a little baby, but it was a really you gotta good move it Pilsner. It's tiny, you got to move it closer little, to you got to move it closer to your face just cuz we're split screen. All right, a little tiny thing. I don't <laughs> no, know. No, no, there you go. Not closer. <laughs> there you go. Zoni Pony. All right, that'll, I got that'll it. Do. Okay. That'll do. <laughs> this this one here I really like. This is Bells from Michigan. Overon oh, yes. Eclipse. It's a citrus wheat beer. I will tell you if you can get this one, get it. So good. So good. It's not these aren't my beers of the week though. I'm just, you okay. know, catching so up my, here. So my buddy, Shiner. shout out to a Butch Drews from Clegg's who who introduced me to Bells. To some really good stuff Bells from them. Is, I like them a lot. Bells is so good. This is Shiner Wheat, Shiner, Shiner's uh, Peach Wheat. Um, I had it twice. The first time I didn't like it, the second time I did. Maybe it was just because of what the food. I don't know. I've had two of them, you know, in research for you. Okay. <laughs> this one, this one was sitting around too long. I don't even know if it's still on the shelves. Abita's Rideshare Triple IPA 10%. This is really good. If you can score this one. But the beer of the week. Here we go. The Gnarly Barley Hi-Fi Heffa South German Style Hypovisen. Okay. Since it's 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 it's, this, it's that time of year. It's a beautiful beer. Um, 
as they read, Hi-Fi Hefe is an adventure that starts with a traditional German Hefeweizen yeast strain that we ferment at moderate temps, resulting in complex and re refined phenolics for a hint of spice and subdued fruity esters. I have no idea what the hell that means. With a deep golden hue and a pleasing density, it cleans up with a refreshing and dry finish. A gnarly take on a southern German Hefeweizen. 5.5%. It's a spring release. This stuff is a really really nice beer gnarly barley and there you go i mean matt i've been drinking a lot of beers to because we just don't come on often enough and trying to research and do this for you but next tuesday i've got more you're a man of honor thank you for the research great to chat we'll do it again next week go boilers <laughs> sleep finds all i can say afr afr we're brought to you by action industries a proud partner of lsu athletics if you're out at the box Anytime there's a mound visit, presented by Action Industries. And our friend at Action, they've been in business since 1982, more than 40 years servicing the petrochemical and refinery markets in Louisiana. And remember, they also offer fabrication services, pipe, structural steel, pressure vessels, which not everyone does. And a couple of things are important. With their pipe fabrication, they fabricate in separate shops, alloy and carbon steel. The two sections are segregated. You understand why that's important. They are ASME certified vessel manufacturer, and they have all ASME uh, stamps, RS and U. They got them all over at Action Industries. They're just the best. They do food grade fabrication as well. One of the largest coffee brands in the world, Action Industries does their food grade fabrication. It's Action Industries. Check them out online. A proud partner of LSU Athletics. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared toward seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other. I make a little room and 
she climbs on up. After further review, powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. For any team that we play, it's our standards first. It's competing, sharing the ball, .5 mentality, um, coming out for 48 minutes and holding ourselves to a standard. They're a team that plays small, they read, switch multiple screens, they want to get out, shoot threes, attack the paint. So we're seeing that a lot with most of the teams, but it comes down to our standards first. Willie Green, as his team gets ready to uh, get back on the floor tonight, the Pels are up in Brooklyn to take on the Nets. Uh, Pels, a seven and a half point road favorite in this game. Remember, for the Nets, no Ben Simmons. He's done for the year. Nets are on a three game slide while the Pelicans feel like they're surging a bit. The loss at home to Cleveland, notwithstanding. You know, New Orleans, seven and three in their last 10, while the Nets are just four and six. As I mentioned, they're on a three game slide. And for New Orleans, kind of what we're looking at right now is as you come down the stretch of this season, can you find a way to push into the top four? Um, as, as you well know, but for those who, who don't, you want to be in the top six, of course. The top six avoids the play-in. Um, the, the, those next four teams, seven through ten, play for the final two spots in, in the postseason. So you want to be in the top six. And then the next goal, once you're in the top six, is to be top four so you have home court advantage in an opening round series. And right now the Pels are in the five seed, two games ahead of Sacramento. And this is the tricky part about, about the Western Conference because, yes, those ahead of you are in sight. I mean, you look at New Orleans in the five seed right now, they are one game behind the Clippers, and New Orleans owns the season series against the Clippers. So if they end up tied... New Orleans is the four seed uh, by virtue of their season series win over the Clippers. So yeah, man, you are a game behind the Clippers in the four seed, but you are two and a half games ahead of Dallas in the seven, and you were that close to being back in the play-in. So this is one of those games where you go on the road against a, a Brooklyn team that is not very good, and is struggling while you're surging, and you really feel like, look, as a seven seven and a half point road favorite against a Brooklyn team that's got a losing record at home this year, you got to go play your best and win this game. But Willie Green, when he met with reporters today, said still the focus is the old cliche, one game at a time, and not looking at the big picture with the standings. Lock out the noise. You know, concentrate on what we can control. We can control our preparation. We can control how hard we go and practice film. Um, and it's really take it one game at a time. And that's the key for it. I know it's a cliche, but it's really how you have to look at this. It's take it a game at a time, win the game in front of you, and then prepare for the next one. Last time out, the Pels uh, blew the doors off of Portland, 126 to 107. Part of that, of course, was a a 29-point third quarter, and this has been a team that's been very good recently in the third quarter, which was a bugaboo for this team for a long time. Here was Willie Green on how they've been so good coming out of halftime. I think attention to detail, uh, understanding the sense of urgency of where we are, you know, and, and that's the deal for us. Is for 48 minutes, we want to try to put together as best we can, the best possible game we can. Coming out of halftime, we'll look at some film, we'll talk about some adjustments and keys to winning the game, and the guys are coming out executing. I think if Ed Ogeron were there, he'd tell his guys, try to have a press conference. <laughs> guys, thank you. Um, one quick note, um, Dyson Daniels out uh, tonight, but Willie Green, uh, so they're getting close. Number two, if you could, means they're getting closer there uh, with Dyson. He went through a full practice today. He looked fine, um, but he's still probably a week and a half or so before you know, he's ready to test out games. So it's still a progression that he has to go through, but this is a part of it, and he's, he's getting past the first step now. It's been, um, it's been since February the 9th since the Pels have had Dyson Daniels. And look, one of the things that th this isn't like a, a unique thought or anything. It's what everybody says about this Pelicans team. While maybe there – well, certainly there are other teams in the NBA who have better a, a better number one, right? You have a, a legit – MVP candidate at the top of your roster in the front of your rotation, the Pelicans' depth is one of their greatest advantages. And look, when you get Dyson Daniels back, it's another guard to add to a really deep roster. And and 
and Willie Green talked a little bit about what it'll be like having Dyson Daniels back if they get him back here in about a week or so. It'll be great. Uh, another one of our key role players that comes in can defend multiple positions. You know, he's, he had a really good season until he um, had the injury, so it'll be good to get him back. Sure. Uh, Willie Green, again, uh, before his team on the road tonight in Brooklyn, takes on the Nets. Pelicans are seven-and-a-half-point road favorites in Brooklyn. Go get it done tonight and uh, just keep on surging. All right, it is after further review. We're glad to have you aboard with us here. Brought to you by Hudco. Listen, it was a um, – golly, we had some awful weather on Sunday. You know that. Uh, and, and a lot of rain. If you, you had that rain and that awful weather so much – so many times when it rains is whenever you realize you got roof damage – commercial or residential, give us a call if you're in the 225. Um, we'd love to help you out. You can always give us a shout. Um, 364-1007, 364-1007, 7 Give us a call. Not only does it ring the office, it'll ring a handful of people on our staff's cell phones as well. So you're going to talk to a human. You're not getting an answering service. You know, you'll know, you probably talk to Christina over at the office right there on Perkins Road, or maybe it'll ring to Richard Tilly or Ryan Terrio or Joe Morales. Like you're going to talk to a human. So give us a call, 225-364-1007. We can get one of our inspectors out uh, to you. I mean, today, worst case t scenario, tomorrow, uh, to get up on the roof, we'll meet your adjuster. We'll help you file a claim if that's what it comes down to. Commercial or residential, roof repairs, roof replacements, we'd love to help you out at HUDCO. 364-1007. Give us a shout, 364-1007. All right, y'all, it's after further review. Final break here of hour number two. We've still got a ton to get to. Um, 30 minutes from right now, Tyler Miller will be here. Tyler Miller is the big offensive line commit out of Mississippi who pledged to the Tigers on Sunday. He'll be with us in 30 minutes from right now. We'll preview the LSU men's basketball game against North Texas, which is about an hour and 45 minutes from tip. We'll talk LSU, Louisiana Tech, and baseball. If you missed it, Shea Dixon was here last hour, as were Aaliyah Finnegan and Connor McLean from the LSU gymnastics team. They joined us in studio. It was great to talk to those ladies as they're getting ready for the SEC um, uh, championship gymnastics meet. This weekend in New Orleans, they, of course, joined us on behalf of the G-Team. All right, final break here of hour number two. We'll come back. We used to do Tigers and the Pros. Don't you move. It's AFR. AFR. We're brought to you by Darren James and Associates, brokered by LPT Realty. Every single day, more and more and more agents keep joining LPT. If you're a realtor and, and you've heard all of this noise surrounding LPT Realty and are wondering, What's the commotion? It's worth a conversation with Darren James. I'll give you Darren's cell phone here in just a quick minute, but you can always go to agent225.com. LPT Realty stands for Listing Power Tools. It's the marketing. It's the communication, the collaboration, and also how they handle commissions. It allows you, the agent, to keep more of your commission, and that's one of the reasons, one of the primary reasons so many agents are flooding to LPT Realty. If you're interested, you need to call Darren James. 335-7666. 335-7666. That's a cell. 335-7666 or agent225.com. Think real estate. Think Darren James. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Bayou Ford has 7,500 off MSRP on new 23 Ford F-150 XLT trucks. 7,500 off plus 1.9% financing for 72 months. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly 
is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. RAC teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps were held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call After further review, powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. All right, wrapping up hour number two, Muso Tigers and the Pros. Tigers and the Pros. They still bleed purple and gold. They're just really rich now. All right, so yesterday we told you about some visits that Trey White is planning on taking as he looks for his next destination in the NFL. Adam Schefter reports earlier on those visits. Today was the Los Angeles Rams, and Trey White is also scheduled to meet later this week with both the Titans and the Giants. You'll remember Mike Garofolo from NFL Network also reported the Raiders. So four different teams on the docket for Trey White this week. We uh, we will keep you posted. Come on, Trey. You'll remember uh, Netflix. They've been doing these series following different sports. You had full swing with uh, the PGA Tour. There was a tennis one, Breakpoint. Also, they, qu- the quarterback. They qu- do the quarterback show. Quarterback uh, yeah. with the NFL. Yeah. And now yeah. they'll have one called Receiver. It's oh. being produced. Uh, obviously, uh, Netflix, NFL Films, 2 p.m. Productions, and Omaha Productions, Peyton Manning. But the important part is Justin Jefferson's going to be a part of it. So they're going to they're going to hey. follow five different receivers, and Justin Jefferson's one of them. So shout out, man! You'll get an inside look at Jets. We need an Omaha drop. We do need an Omaha we need drop. Going, Omaha. We can use that for a lot of different yeah, things. A lot of things. Yeah, lot we're gonna things. we're gonna make that one happen. A lot of things. Make, make that happen. Make happen. Uh, happen. The story do of it. the uh, Timberwolves Jazz game last night was. Uh, Anthony Edwards is just humiliating some guy and his, and his family on national television yeah. with one of the, just the most vicious dunks Dunk, ever. Yeah. But if you were watching that game, you also saw Nas Reed get Should've the start and stayed. drop 17 points, all of those in the first half, because he did leave with an injury. Nas took a, uh, a shot to the back of the head mm. and did not return. If he had stayed, he'd been more durable. Uh, potentially, yeah. Another, yeah. another year in the weight program, man. Another year in the weight program. Uh, so we'll keep you updated, obviously, there. There were no comments after the game uh, on the on the uh, severity of the injury. Duop Reef last night for the Blazers, 14 points, 12 of them in the fourth quarter. Really helped. Uh, well, actually, he didn't help salt the game away. They lost, no, they but lost. he had 12 points Bulls? of his 14th. Yeah, Bulls beat him. I was watching. Only by three. It was close because of the 12 you points. You know why I was watching late in the fourth quarter, huh, Muse? I have a pretty good idea. <laughs> I played a little, uh, a little over there. It did, did, uh, it did not hit. Ah, well, we'll just save the ding for the next time. A little bummed. Well, that is I a bummer. live bet NBA overs in the final two minutes. You watch it, watch it, watch it, wait for that number to come. As then you, they pounce. Because you're always going to get a lot of scoring late in the games. It's a pretty good angle if you can get it. Yeah. You've got to time it right. Yeah. Didn't hit yesterday, though. It, not yesterday. Yeah. No. 
but a solid fourth quarter for Duop Reef nonetheless. I watched a lot of a lot of NBA in the final five 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 to seven minutes of the game. <laughs> when you see the peak, the, the peak the in the ratings <laughs> at the end of the game, that's, that's a scone me. household that's right me. there. Yeah. That's all me. That's Tigers in the Pros. Presented by Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. They're online at lmfj.com, lmfj.com, with two locations in Baton Rouge Corporate Boulevard in Bocage, of course, in the Mall of Louisiana as well. A New Orleans, Lafayette, Shreveport, 10 locations and all. Gentlemen, if you're thinking of popping the question, there's just no better place to go. You know, whenever you think about buying a ring, which is a symbol of your love that she's going to wear forever and one day pass to your daughter or someone in your family, don't you want her to look at that every time and, and be thrilled? Well, that experience, that experience is something you should remember forever. Well, Lee Michaels... For 40 years, they pride themselves on creating the Lee Michaels experience. When you walk in, they'll hand you a, a cold beverage. You'll have chocolates on a tray. You don't have to worry about somebody pulling out a calculator from behind the, the desk to show you how they're going to save you money. And it, it, it's not how it should be and how it should feel. Lee Michaels does an amazing job of creating that experience that you're going to be thrilled with and thrilled to give her. And by the way, if for whatever reason she, she doesn't like it or wants something different, they do take exchanges, and they'll make sure that you and she are thrilled with that with that beautiful piece of jewelry. If they don't have what you want, they can get it or they can custom make it for you. It's Lee Michaels, lmfj.com, lmfj.com for Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. Um, next month, the uh, LSU Coaches Clinic. You, what's the date on this? Do you have it handy? <clears throat> yes, I can check the email that we got. That'll check tell it. Us. Next month, the uh, LSU Coaches Clinic will uh, be taking place. This is really cool. April 4th through the 6th. April 4th through 6th. The uh, Pivot, uh, RC's podcast with Channing Crowd and Fred Taylor, are going to have Brian Kelly as a guest, and they're going to do a live uh, show with audience participation at LSU. So I guess we'll wait on further details if it's going to be at the Maravich Center or where, where they're going to have it. But uh, this is awesome, man. You'll know I'm a big fan of the Pivot. I think they've done an awesome job with that show. It's RC and two former Florida Gators. So that part of it stinks a little bit. But look, we've been a big fan of Channing Crowder here on the show for a long time, as you might Cleveland, remember. Cleveland, the anus of America. It's the booty. Hit it again. Cleveland, yeah. the anus of America. It's the booty. I mean, that goes, uh, that's got to be, that's at least 10 years old, that clip, when Channing was doing a radio down in, in Miami exclusive. But um, uh, love the pivot. It's been a great job. And they'll, uh, they'll uh, Brian Kelly, on a live taping of the show with audience participation um, sometime there during the coach's clinic. We'll give you more details. Hour number three, coming up. AFR. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Was a human day, barefoot children play, looking for the summer shade. Time to slip away. Oh, Louisiana, some kind of hold on me. Like cypress stumps, your roots are planted deep inside of me. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques, Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana 
and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com. I'm Christine Lisi. Less than a week after his release by the Chargers for salary cap reasons, receiver Mike Williams has landed with the Jets. One-year deal worth up to $15 million, reports ESPN's Adam Schefter. Another target added for quarterback Aaron Rodgers to pair with number one receiver Garrett Wilson. Our Harry Douglas. I like this signing. You have someone that can play uh, opposite of Garrett Wilson. That can now be that X if you just want to get the ball to throw him a jump ball down in the red zone. Also be a threat for uh, the New York Jets organization. Area Freddie and Harry. Brown signed newly acquired receiver Jerry Judy. Three-year extension, $58 million, $41 million guaranteed at signing. Bengals signing offensive tackle Trent Brown to a one-year deal. He and Orlando Brown Jr. give Cincinnati bookend tackles to protect quarterback Joe Burrow. Bengals did have an O-line vacancy to fill after Jonah Williams signed with Arizona last week. The Saints, Saints defensive end Chase Young, rather, is expected to miss part of training camp after undergoing a neck procedure. The Saints were aware of his neck issue before signing Young yesterday. He has a one-year deal, guaranteed $13 million. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance, making it easy to save money. When you bundle your auto policy with home, condo, or renters, you'll earn a multi-policy discount. Easy to bundle, easy to save. Visit Progressive.com. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. Live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. Hour three, off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. AFR, presented by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. I'm Matt. Love you, Matt. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. Mm, you sir. And Mr. Toby Tomplay. We're here. Glad you are as well. Five o'clock quitting time. Glad you're driving home with us. A Tyler Miller in 15 minutes. Big offensive lineman out of Mississippi who committed to LSU over the weekend. Looking forward to that conversation. And uh, the bottom of this hour, we'll start to give you a little bit of a of a um, uh, of a 
a thumbnail preview of LSU and Louisiana Tech. Uh, hopefully a, a bounce-back opportunity for Jay Johnson's squad tonight. Uh, they took it on the chin in Starkville this past weekend, lost two out of three, you know the story. But this is a big challenge tonight for LSU. Um, Louisiana Tech is one of those teams that's kind of a product of COVID, transfer portal, and they've got an old team. They have one of the oldest starting lineups in college baseball, uh, like just in, in terms of years, like years old. So you're talking about a very veteran squad that's that's coming, and Elaine you know, Burroughs is a really good coach, and um, it's going to be a – this would be a big challenge for LSU tonight. A great opportunity before Florida comes in this weekend. So uh, we'll talk about that coming up at the bottom of the hour. Hopefully we have the lineup posted uh, by then so we can kind of run through it. Because I am, I am going to be very interested to see how Jay Johnson elects to go about uh, this game tonight. Is it, you know, do you revert to the lineup they used on Friday? And I'm mostly talking about the outfield. I think the infield set, with the exception of what you might do at catcher now, if Brady kneels and right, that obviously changed what you're going to do behind the plate. But, um, you know, when it, it it certainly feels like your best outfield from left to right is Bingham, Kling, and Pearson. Does he go back to that? Does he shuffle it? I'll be interested to see. We'll find out in a little bit whenever uh, the lineup's posted. All right, it's after further review. Um, I, I do want to talk about LSU North Texas. We're 56 minutes away from tip there in the NIT over at the Maravich Center. Um, of course, it is general admission. You can get in for 20 bucks, and uh, students get in for free. Matt McMahon was here with us yesterday. Really cool. Um, you know, great opportunity for this program, which we're looking forward to. Um, one of the things, though, but before I get to that, just real quick in case you missed it, we, we led the show with this earlier today, but just, by the benefit of, uh, just uh, for the benefit of the fact of a lot of people who might have been at work and haven't seen this yet today, uh, Adam Schefter earlier uh, reported Chase Young signed his deal with the Saints, one year, $13 million. Um, Chase Young is undergoing a neck procedure that's expected to sideline him into training camp. Uh, the expectation is that he will return in time for the season. It says teams were aware of the neck issue, but the Saints were comfortable moving ahead with it. So um, it certainly puts a damper on the most high-profile free agent signing for New Orleans up until this point. And I mean, sincerely hoping that whatever this is, Chase Young is able to get through it, recover, and be available and healthy in time for the start of the season. Because, and this has been, this is the singular knock on Chase Young. Four years in the NFL, and essentially he's missed two seasons due to injury. Uh, when he's been on the field, he's been a productive player. He just hasn't been on the field. It's shades of Marcus Davenport. And coincidentally, this is effectively the same deal that the Vikings gave Davenport a year ago, which was, I believe was a one-year $12 million deal. Well, the Saints have given Chase Young a one-year $13 million deal, fully guaranteed, but you know, it's a, it's a prove-it deal. Can you stay healthy and be productive? And if so, you get a, a longer-term deal. But this isn't exactly how you wanted to start it with uh, – with this uh, a neck procedure, you hear anything to do with the neck? Of course, it's, a, it's immediately going to raise certain red flags. Um, I think it is worth noting, uh, and I, I mentioned this earlier in the show. I don't do not know the the nature of the injury or the procedure, but one thing I have learned is there is a difference between surgery and a procedure. Surgery involves cutting. A procedure can be anything from uh, an injection to a scope to a clean out to so just d different things. So. Maybe it's not as significant as neck surgery, but again, I, I, I want to be so abundantly clear. I don't know. I'm being very candid. I do not know the extent of this. So I, this is the first I heard about it today is, was the, the first for many of you. But um, we'll learn more as we go, and we'll see Chase Young on the field when we do, but it won't be in OTAs or minicamp. It won't be maybe even at the start of training camp. It'll be uh, when, whenever it is, and hopefully when it is, will be for the start of the regular season. Okay. Uh, it's after further review. We're brought to you by Relief Windows and ReliefWindows.com. As a matter of fact, our, our buddy Brandon Holly was just in studio. I was here um, recording some uh, some commercials, some new commercials that you'll hear. And so he popped in studio there at the top of the hour. Got to chat with him for a little while. Uh, I'm so proud of him, man. He's been a great friend of mine for years. He and Adrian are just awesome people. And uh, so it's my pleasure, honestly, my pleasure to be able to talk about Relief Windows because you know, they they trust me as an extension of their company and their family and their brand whenever I get to talk about them. It's something I never, ever take lightly. And, you know, when you talk about good 
ethical people that do great business, that's Relief Windows. It's one of the things I tell you all the time. Brandon has told me this for years, that while their goal is to, to thrill every customer they have, they actually kind of like it when somebody does complain because he says to me, he says, that's when we can prove who we are as a company. Because when someone's upset with something and you're able to leave them with a pleasant experience that says that speaks volumes about your company, and that's, that's Relief Windows. They'll never take a dollar from you. They will never take a dollar from you until they're done and you're thrilled. That's Relief Windows. Windows, door siding. Oh, yeah. They do indoor shutters as well. Relief Windows and ReliefWindows.com. All right, we are 52 minutes away from tip. LSU and North Texas uh, in the NIT. As we mentioned, LSU and North Texas played earlier this year. It was the fourth game of the season. LSU and North Texas played in the Charleston Classic earlier this year. Tigers won at 66-62. That was at a time in the season when LSU had lost back-to-back -back games at home to Nichols and then against Dayton. So it came at a point where they needed a win, and LSU is clearly a dramatically different team now than they were back in November. They're in the fourth game of the season. Um, Matt McMahon was here yesterday with us on the show, and, and I asked him specifically about that. I asked Matt McMahon how different his team is now from when they played North Texas in the fourth game of the season. Mike Williams was our point guard at the time. Trey Hannibal had not taken the leap that he's taken here over the last couple of months. So his role was different on that team. We were different schematically on the defensive end, and we had to make some changes there uh, to make up for some deficiencies. But, but I think we're a, a much, much better team than we were in that game. Unfortunately, so are they. I think they've gotten better as the season went on as well. But it'll be a great test for us. It's a short line. The Tigers are favored tonight against North Texas. As we mentioned, it's a, uh, it's a 6 p.m. Central tip-off, so we're talking 51 minutes from our 50 minutes from right now. And you know, I did ask Matt McMahon about, about the game specifically against North Texas and what they hope to do to have success. We really want to try and control the tempo. They play incredibly slow, uh, long, deep, long possessions. Uh, so we'd love to be able to get some stops and, and get the pace of the game going up tempo tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, of course, is tonight with LSU and North Texas. Let me remind you, uh, because you have both basketball and baseball at the same time, basketball, because they're the priority in season, will be on Eagle 98.1. So if you're looking for the game on radio, basketball will be on Eagle 98.1. Baseball tonight will be on 100.7, the Tigers. So if you're driving around tonight and you're looking for the baseball game, Baseball will be on 100.7, the Tiger in, in Baton Rouge. Basketball will be on Eagle 98.1. All right, y'all, it is after further review. Our Tuesday shows are powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana, proud partner of LSU Athletics. Let me knock out a quick break. When we come back, uh, Tyler Miller will join us. Big offensive line commitment uh, out of the state of Mississippi, pledged to the Tigers, another number one player in the country at his position, the number one interior offensive lineman in the country for the class of 2025 has picked the Tigers. He's going to join us when we come back. And then bottom of this hour, we'll preview LSU and Louisiana Tech and baseball. We're glad you're with us. It's a Tuesday edition of AFR. AFR. Brought to you by Rouse's, the official supermarket of the New Orleans Saints. And y'all, Rouse's has got crawfish live and boiled. And the great news is that prices are coming down. We're less than two weeks away from Easter now. A lot of people have their Easter, their crawfish boils on Easter. Rouse's can certainly help you out there. If you want to reserve your bags of crawfish, you can do it. It's Rouse's, the official supermarket of the New Orleans Saints. And look, one of the great things that I love about Rouse's is when you walk in, look, you know you can go make your groceries at Rouse's. They've been helping people do that for 100 years. But uh, when you go in, if you want lunch or dinner and any option, they've got it for you at Rouse's. Walk in, go to the left. You'll see the hot and boiled seafood combos. Like, you can get a pound of boiled crawfish with two potatoes and, and one uh, ear of corn for $5.99. It's, it's an incredible deal. They've got boiled shrimp and snow crab and lobster. So many great options. Check it out at Rouse's. Rouse's.com. Rouse's. This feels like home. He's here. Anyone want a Coors Light? Oh, shoot. I forgot to play the song. I got a guy who can fix this. Bayou Ford has 7,500 off MSRP on new 23 Ford F-150 XLT trucks. 7,500 off plus 1.9% financing for 72 months. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you.
I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. RAC teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. BRAC, your number one park system in the nation. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985. After further review, powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. All right, we're rolling along here on the Tuesday edition of AFR. Uh, powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. I, I, I don't know, but nobody ever wants to have an inside joke in radio. Um, we were laughing. So we have a weird thing in studio, I, and this has persisted for some time, and we have tried to dissect it, and I have no, no one, our engineers, nobody can seem to figure this out. But for some reason, when there, sometimes when we call a guest, they have an echo on their phone. It, it, and it, we, there is no discernible reason. Like our engineers have dug into it for whatever for some reason. So whenever they, whenever that happens, if they dial in, the echo goes away. For I, we have no, no idea why this has happened. Anyway, that just that, that just happened with with Tyler. He had the echo, and then I was telling Muse, man, you may you may have to call him with the echo uh, to get him dialed back. But anyway, we're back. So, um, all right, it's after further review, as you all well know by now. Uh, LSU landed their 11th commitment for the class of 2025. Um, the latest coming this weekend, Tyler Miller, uh, an interior offensive lineman out of the state of Mississippi, picked the Tigers. And Tyler Miller is good enough to join us for a couple of minutes here. Hey, Tyler, we appreciate the time, man. How are you? I'm doing good. Man, congratulations on your decision. Uh, let's start with an easy one. Uh, why did you pick the Tigers, and why was this the right time to make your announcement? I really picked the Tigers because, like, when I – the minute I walked through, I just felt at home. The way they, the way I was greeted, the way I was shown, especially when I went to practice, it, it was like I, I could see myself getting better there, especially with Coach Davis. And um, I really wanted to go get, go ahead and get my commitment out of the way so I could focus on my senior season. You know, I've seen you listed um, anywhere from six five to six seven, three ten to three eighteen. Uh, where where are you listed right now? Like, what what is your your height and weight right now? Um, mostly it's like six five and a couple of in, more in, like almost six five, almost six five to like six six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I say I lose weight a little bit a lot, so it's between like three ten or three eighteen, gotcha. three twenty. 
Hey, man, when you're young and that metabolism revs, man, one day in pads, you can drop 10 pounds out on a field. Um, yes, hey, um, I've, I've seen a few interviews with you where you've mentioned Brad Davis. And he's, been, he's obviously been awesome. So I'd love it from your perspective. Uh, what, what has made that relationship so special for you? Really, what made it special is, like, just talking to him and, like, him, like, explaining to me and, like, it just felt, like, so genuine and genuine. And, like, the way he fed it to me, the way he, he was talking, the way he, like, go about his things and how he, how he carries himself, I, like, I got a lot of respect for that. And it just felt like I was talking to, like, my own, like, my own dad or my cousin mm. or anybody. It just felt like... I feel the connection, like family wise. Tyler, is there, and I don't, you don't need to name names or anything like that, but do you have an op, have you had an opposite experience at, at certain places or talking to certain coaches where you don't feel maybe as, as connected with, with other coaches? Um, yes, sir. A little bit. It felt like, it felt like it's like an act almost to a point. Hmm. But of course, like, I don't know. I wouldn't, sure. They try. Know me at one point in time, but comparing like to Coach Davis and some others, it felt like it was the act. But Coach Davis, it felt like real genuine, and he like fed it to me raw and how I was gonna get it. Yeah, yeah, and look, your experience is your experience. You, it's it's not right or wrong. It's just your experience. It you know it's just interesting when you're so highly recruited like you are, and you talk to dozens and dozens of coaches. I would assume everybody you know tries to put on their their best their best you know, or their best foot forward, but. Clearly, you 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 noticed a difference with Brad Davis, as so many guys do, uh, as evidenced by the success that he's had. Um, what um, you know, you've got they've got you listed as an interior offensive lineman, and you know I was watching some of your huddle highlights, and I clearly yeah, you know, it's this is pretty common, right, Tyler, in high school where guy you're the best player on the line, you go go play left tackle. So uh, where where do you think you you fit at at the next level? Um, it's really I I I would want to play tackle, but um, it's like it's any way I can get on the field, I wouldn't mind because I can play any position. But um, yeah, if I can play any position, I I would rather play tackle though. Mm. You've all, have you always played tackle? Yes, sir. I mean that's just how it goes, isn't it? It's like you're the best player on the team. You're gonna play left tackle. It's just kind of like how it goes in high school. Yes, yeah, sir. Um, have you have you play have you ever played center or guard? Um, no, sir. I played guard on my I played guard like one time in the spring game for my like ninth grade year. But it, it, anything else, no, sir. Yeah. So when you came, I would assume you came to to camp at LSU. Did they work you out on the interior? Um, I haven't I haven't been to LSU camp. Okay, so it'll be this summer you'll come in? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, be interesting to see how that goes. If I asked you, what do you think your strengths are um, as as an offensive lineman, either either inside or out? What do you think your, your strengths are? Uh, really, really my upper, my upper body. I feel it in my footwork. I feel like, it, well, people, that's what people say, my footwork. I have it, like, sit there and like just looked at it but it's like my footwork and yeah maybe my footwork and my upper body yeah what do you think you have to work on before you get to college most definitely my uh, past my past uh set and, or getting getting stronger most definitely based more like in my lower body man i'm watching your yeah. we're watching your huddle film and you you're just throwing dudes around and run block, which I mean, it happens a lot, right? I mean, you got a lot of guys you're outweighed by a hundred pounds, so a lot of times that is what guys want to work on getting in their in their seat and, and uh, their kick slide. Uh, Tyler Miller's with us, LSU football commitment. Hey, man, you're from the state of Mississippi. Was it tough not not committing to one of the home state schools? Uh, yes, man. Especially like coming from like players, we got like two. Uh, Players that used to play from that come from my high school that went to Mississippi State, so it, it was really hard. Did uh, any of them, any of them giving you any lip, giving you the business? <laughs> nah, <laughs> not, not yet. Well, you know what, man, uh, you'll have bragging rights for a long time. You're going to LSU, which has won a bunch of championships, and uh, those two schools haven't. So, like, I would assume, how much of that, the opportunity to go to a place where 
you can win a national championship. Uh, how much of that weighed into your decision? It weighed, it weighed a lot. It, it didn't, it didn't, it weighed a lot. And of course, that was like in the back of my mind, but I was like looking at it as I can, I feel myself getting, getting like the best, the, this LSU can get the best, like, version of, version of me, like, as a man and graduating. Did you get a chance to meet Brian Kelly? Yeah, sir. Yeah, what what was it like getting to meet him and talk to him a little bit? It was it was amazing. It was amazing, especially like I you I really don't get to see high profile guys like that and like seeing like Coach Kelly. It it was amazing. It was like it was like it was amazing. <laughs> did uh have you been to a game yet at, in Baton Rouge? Uh yes, sir. Which one did you come for? I went to the um Auburn Auburn game. So th this last year, you came in for Auburn. Yes, sir. Cool. What did you think of that experience? It was, it was nice. It, the seat the seats weren't the best, but they were nice. And when they, did they wait, did they stick you in the upper deck? <laughs> yes. <sir>. Oh no! <laughs> hey man, we gotta fix that. Did you get to go down on the field at least before the game? Uh, yes, sir. We went uh, okay. down before the field. <laughs> okay, at least you got to go down. Uh, hey, man, you'll have a much better view when you're wearing the purple and gold. How about that? Uh, he he is uh, Tyler Miller, four-star offensive lineman who's uh, now committed to LSU. Hey, before you go, um, how much hey, – we've talked so much here about this class, right, with Bryce Underwood and DeCorey and Moore and Harlem Berry and Keelan Moses and Jabari Antoine. I mean, it's like now, obviously, you – like. Was was part of your decision being a part of this class with so many high profile guys? Yes, sir. Some 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 of it was like I know like coming in we can like I just, most definitely I wanted to like I feel like I contribute contribute to the class and like do good do good with them especially with Bryce and Harlan and the Curry. Yeah, man. Well, there's a lot of people excited about it, man. I know a lot of people are excited to see the news on Sunday when you made your commitment. Uh, wish you all the best, man. Thanks for some time today. Stay healthy. Have a great senior year, and uh, we'll look forward to catching up with you somewhere down the line, all right? Yes, sir. Most definitely. Hey, thank you for the time. Yes, sir. That is uh, Tyler Miller, newest commitment for LSU's 2025 class. Uh, eight of the 11 commitments on the offensive side of the ball, and as we mentioned, now you've got, with Tyler Miller, four players that are number one in the country at their position. So uh, he's primarily played left tackle. He's projected as an interior offensive lineman at the next level. You heard him say there, he's about 6'5", 3'10", and uh, that that certainly looks like an interior offensive lineman. But, man, you get your footwork down and prove maybe he can kick out and play tackle. Says it's all he's ever played. It's what he wants to play. But um, time will tell. But another good one for LSU. And it's worth mentioning, You know, as we look at that offensive line, beyond 2024 you know this year you are I mean you you could be the best offensive line in college football this year you've got bookend tackles with Will Campbell and Emory Jones you know, DJ Chester slides in at center but Garrett Dellinger is a four-year starter and you got Miles Frazier who of course was a, an FCS you know all-American or, or excuse me not an FCS he was um, all-conference all at the at FIU uh, he was a freshman All-American at FIU uh, before he came to LSU, and now he's you know, been a starter here with the Tigers. Um, but after this year, you're losing the four guys aside from DJ Chester. So 2025 is going to be a massive opportunity. You know, four guys like like Bo Bordelon and and you know, Tyree Adams and some of the younger guys that are, are coming up right now through this program who are biding their time and waiting. And then maybe some of the, the young commits or signees will have an opportunity to compete for a job. It's very likely LSU will go you know, dip into the portal. But Brian Kelly said he wants to build through the high school ranks and supplement in the portal. And maybe it's you know, maybe there's a, a, a Maybe there's a starting left tackle with tons of experience who could be a one-year guy for you in 2025 while some of these young players grow up. But whatever, however it, it shakes out, there's going to be a ton of opportunity on the offensive line in 2025 after these guys you know, go off to the NFL. I, I'm assuming, of course, that Will Campbell and Emory Jones are going to be, will be gone after their junior year and go be first-round draft picks. But um, Tyler Miller, latest member of the uh, 
the class of 2025 for LSU. Okay, we're brought to you by the Williamson Eye Center. You know the drill. Call 924-2020, 924-2020, or go to williamsoneye.com. That's williamsoneye.com. If you want to see 2020, you want to ditch the contacts and glasses forever, you can do it. The Williamson Eye Center can help. I did it. Dr. Blake Williamson did my LASIK more than five years ago, five and a half years now, and I'm thrilled. Still five and a half years later, still seeing 2020 without contacts or glasses, and man, I just couldn't be more thrilled with that that decision. My only regret, my single regret, my singular regret is I didn't do it years before, that, that, that I wasted so many years farting around, shoving contact lens in my eyes and you know, wearing out of prescription, a dated prescription glasses at night. Uh, what a waste. But can't do anything about it. But every day now I wake up in the morning and I just see. All thanks to the Williamson Eye Center. Call 924-2020. Go for your consultation. 924-2020 or williamsoneye.com. All right, y'all. Uh, it's been a good show. Good Tuesday. Glad to have you hanging out with us here. Uh, we are 31 minutes away from tip over at the Maravich Center with LSU and North Texas. Still time to get out there if you want to go catch the NIT game tonight. A lot of action. you got the NIT game. you got the baseball game tonight at 6.30, so we're an hour away from first pitch, LSU and Louisiana Tech. And, of course, the women will play Friday uh, at the at the Maravich Center. It'll be interesting to see if, um, you know, if Louisville wins their first-round matchup, which I think we're probably assuming they will, then LSU will match up against Louisville in the second round, which means Haley Van Lith against her former team. So that, in and of itself, would be, would be a, a compelling matchup. You don't think um, maybe, just maybe, the selection committee had an eyeball on that? Maybe? Uh, prob- probably just a coincidence that it would happen that way. Yeah, mm-hmm. right? They don't they don't ever um, match teams up off of TV matchups and things like that and storylines. That's what they always say. Wouldn't make sense. No. Nah, Why would you do that? No. You don't want eyeballs on any sport. Random. Throw names in a hat. Just like the potential national championship rematch in the Elite Eight? That's so stupid, too, by the way. Like, why would you do that? Why would that happen in the Elite Eight? Yeah. It's just a, it's a, it's a really dumb thing uh, that those two teams wouldn't potentially match up in the Final Four. Anyway. Um, okay. Quick break. We'll come back. Uh, we'll give you a little thumbnail preview of LSU and Louisiana Tech. Tigers try to get the um, sour taste out of their mouth uh, for the weekend series loss at Mississippi State. They're at home against the Bulldogs. They're an hour away from first pitch. We'll talk about it next on AFR. AFR. Hey, y'all. One thing you've probably noticed if you've been out and about is mosquitoes are back. Remember, our friends over at Clegg's, they've got the uh, Aon Mosquito Barrier. You can go pick that up. I was at Clegg's this weekend, grabbed one of those. And they've got full greenhouses, man, with shipments of flowers arriving daily. Y'all get on by. Clegg's Nursery, any of the four locations, you know where they are. I, I went to the Segan location, um, got to see Chris and Butch and a lot of my friends over there at Clegg's on Saturday when when I, I took Drew over there. Uh, Eric was running some errands, so Drew and I popped over there together. But it's a great time, and they were packed on Saturday. You could just tell. People are getting in their garden. They're getting in their yard. It's time to just plant something. If you have weeds or before they sprout, this is the time to go treat your yard. It is time to weed and feed. Um, and they've got the products over at Clegg's Nursery. If you're not sure what to buy, they can help. Just ask one of their horticulturists. Buy local, shop local. Tell them Matt sent you in to Clegg's Nursery. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology from desktop to production segment units Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 22500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared toward seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. 
Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us. After further review, powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. Okay, we got the lineup posted for LSU and Louisiana Tech. We'll get into that here in just a quick second. First, here was Jay Johnson uh, when he met with reporters on Monday uh, about the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs that are coming into uh, to the box tonight. A lot of wins. Lane's a good coach. Confident. Have some old players. Again, like... I don't. I guess this is the last year of the COVID. Like you'll look at a name on a scouting sheet and go, like, how is this guy still in college? Like, <laughs> and they're probably saying the same thing about Travinsky. You know what I mean? Or <laughs> Mac Bingham. You know what I mean? Um, but uh, they have a few of those guys, and uh, they do good. They have a good coaching staff, and um, you know it's gonna be, be a good game. A couple of players um, keep an eye out for their center fielder. Uh, center fielder Cole McConnell. Uh, he's a pro prospect. Uh, their catcher Jorge Corona. He's an older senior from Miami. Uh, another another prospect. They got him on this team. This is a good Louisiana Tech team that's coming into the box tonight, and they're they're going to challenge LSU. This uh, I will be pleasantly surprised if this is a, a relatively easy win for the Tigers. But uh, Javen Coleman's going to get the ball for LSU, um, and you know, can you play number five, please? Please, he was also asked. You know, the process in deciding who he's going to use out of the pen uh, tonight? It's to win the game first. There's a number of things that go into that. And I mean, we've used a lot of guys. It's either 17 or 18 pitchers have an appearance. I don't ever remember having that or doing that before. And there's a really fine line, you know, who's better pitching often, who's better when they're fresh. How does it match up? Now that we're past the five game weeks and, and all the games jammed up, you're in a little bit more of a normal schedule. I think that'll help that group a little bit. You know, I want to remind as well um, that, it, by the way, Jimmy just sent us a pick. So for those that are interested, he's got Wagner. It's a 540 tip, so it starts in three minutes. If you're interested in betting, I'll, I'll pick up on the game here, but um, I, I don't want to miss it, so let me get on. What, what, what did he give us, the line, Muse, on Wagner? He gave us plus four. What did he say? Uh, plus three. Plus three. Wagner plus three. All right. So if you're interested, Wagner plus three. They tip here in a few minutes if you want to get in on it. I'll, uh, I'll join the party and hope for the best. Um, one of the things that's worth mentioning is, you know, Jay said there that they've used 17 or 18 pitchers so far. When you think of it in these terms, when you get into regionals and the postseason play, you're, you're not even going to have 17 or 18 pitchers on your, tr on your postseason roster. So you're not going to use that many guys. So much of this right now is figuring out just what Jay said. 
who's better in what spots, who's better with rest, who can come back on the, on the same weekend. Like a lot of, of this is figuring out your team for that. So it's why it's important not to overreact. It's why you, I know we talk about the midweek game thing all the time. It's why midweek games are more of a tinkering opportunity and it's less about the result. Of course, Jay said, look, first it's win. Well, sure, you can say that, but if, if it was a go for broke to win every time, then you'd be taking weekend guys and using them in these midweek games just to win. That's not what it's for. I mean, you could say, yeah, of course you want to win and you want everybody to try hard player and to win, but that's not the primary objective you know, to, to win at all costs when you're playing midweek games. But, you know, the thing that I wanted to see this week, in this game in particular, was if Jay would revert to the lineup he used Friday against Mississippi State, which, with the exception of Neal behind the plate, was your best defensive lineup. Your best defensive lineup has Malazzo behind the plate. But primarily, and most importantly, where we saw the biggest shuffle this weekend was in the outfield, where you saw Bingham play center and Kling go to the bench and Neal and right. Pearson kicked over to left. Well, Jay's going more true to form tonight, and I'm glad to see it because if you're going to lead with pitching and defense, which is what this team needs to do, then you have to have your best defensive lineup on the field, and he's doing that tonight. So the outfield left to right will be Bingham, Kling, and Pearson left to right. So, uh, and, and that's what it should be. Like You want to get Jake Brown reps in right field and give Pearson a day off? I'm, I'm good with that. But in no reality is is Brady Neal in right field your best option. In no reality is Mac Kling, uh, Mac Bingham in center a better option than Paxton Kling. And and we can have this conversation all you want. I'm sure we're going to have it all year if Kling continues to struggle struggle with the bat. And I'm going to tell you flatly, I don't care. I do not care if Paxton Kling doesn't hit. I want him to. Desperately would love for him to settle down, be within himself. Stay in there. Keep his left shoulder in. Make contact. Drive the ball up the middle into right field. The homers will come. He's pressing offensively. We've seen, it's a tale as old as time. He's a draft-eligible sophomore. He's getting his first chance to be an everyday player, and he's trying to wow scouts because he's trying to make a buttload of money this summer. And so he's pressing. Watch him. His left shoulder's flying open. He's way out ahead of everything. He's trying to dead pull everything over the, field, over the fence and left. If he can just settle down, the hits will come. But the undeniable truth is he is an elite center fielder, and you've got to have him in the ball game because of his defense. So anyway, help. I, like I said, bat, bury him in the nine hole. I, I don't also I don't care, but I need him in center every game. Um, so here's how they'll line it up tonight against Louisiana Tech. Uh, Bingham will play left and lead off. Uh, Tommy White will bat second um, and play third. Bear Jones will bat third and play first. Um, and then, which is a little bit of a change. Travinsky will DH and bat fourth. Josh Pearson will play right and bat fifth. Braswell at short will bat sixth. Milam will play second and bat seventh. Paxton Kling, as we mentioned, back in the lineup. He'll play center field and bat eighth. And Alex Malazzo behind the dish, uh, batting ninth and catching. And by the way, Alex Malazzo is batting over 400. I mean, that's, that, is the, that is the perfect example of a guy who has done exactly what I just said, who has, as he's grown up in, in, in this sport as a collegiate hitter, he has stayed patient. He'll Watch Alex Malazzo. Every single stinking hit he gets is up the middle or to right field. He is letting the ball travel. He, it's far, I mean, Terry has talked about this for years. And Terry will work with Malazzo. I'm not even, I mean, I think he's talked about that. You let the ball travel, the more information you get, right? Instead of being way out in front, guessing and swinging over the top, go up the middle, go to right field, put it in play, hit it where they aren't, take your single, get on base, get them on, get them over, get them in, Be, keep the merry-go-round going. That's Malazzo has played within himself offensively, and he's your best defensive catcher. He deserves the opportunity to play. So um, Bingham White Jones, Travinsky Pearson Braswell, Milam Kling Malazzo. Uh, that's your lineup tonight with uh, with Javen Coleman on the bump for the Tigers. All right. Uh, it is after further review. Um, we're glad to have you hanging out with us here. Uh, we're brought to you by Michelli Weighing and Measurement. Michelli.com. Michelli.com. If you weigh or measure something, they sell, service, rent the products you use to weigh and measure. It's the easiest way to say it. And of course, at Michelli, I tell you all the time about their website, which is just an incredible resource. 
because so many people know Michelli as our nation's largest distributor of scales, but then they go to the website and they realize, oh, I didn't realize you did that. They do offer ISO 17025 accreditation. Uh, if you don't know what that is, you don't need it. If you know what that is, you understand why that's so important. And they can calibrate any precision measurement devices. You know, something that should take seven to 10 days has taken other companies eight to 10 weeks for a turnaround. Don't pack up your devices, ship them to Chicago and wait for them to come back. Just call Michelle. They'll even just come to you, pick them up. They can calibrate on site if you need it. It's Michelle Weighing and Measurement. Michelle.com. Michelle.com. Um, all right. It's after further review. Jimmy will be here for Otter Locks when we come back. Uh, Jimmy and Charlie will be over at the Beau Rivage for the next three days for the NCAA tournament. As we mentioned, uh, Jimmy did just give you Wagner, uh, the 540. So they've tipped there. Uh, Wagner plus three was the line. See if that's already tipped if there's an in game on it yet. Um, uh, it's now Wag. Oh, well, it's now Wagner five and a half. Probably should have. There, sometimes there's a benefit to waiting. Uh, oh well, could have gotten a better number. Anyway, uh, it is it is live. If you want a live bet? It, you can get a better number right now. It's Wagner. Uh, Wagner's getting five and a half right now. Live in game. If you want to go play it. All right. It's after further review. We'll knock out our final break of the show. Jimmy will be here uh, to wrap up with us with Otter Locks. It's AFR. AFR. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service and finance team and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. BRAC teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs there are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. BRAC, your number one park system in the nation. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. 
At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to Six Rings Baseball. After further review, powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. Down the stretch, we come final segment here on a Tuesday edition of AFR. Love our friends over at Sunshine, and this is an amazing time to go buy that tractor, buy that zero-turn mower, and of course, nothing runs like a deer, as they always say. Uh, you, Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. Proud supporter of LSU Athletics. One thing left to do, let's find out what we're betting on tonight. Time for Otter Locks. Otter Locks, presented by Lofton Staffing Services. At Lofton, we put people to work. Call us today at 924-0200 or go to lofton.jobs. So we turn to the one and only, the incomparable and often incomprehensible, the outfather himself, Jimmy Ott. Otter, how are you? Good, Matthew. How about you? Man, I'm doing awesome. <laughs> Glad we got some picks tonight, uh, some games. Uh, we got the, the yeah. Wagner. We gave out your Wagner play. And, um, man, it started early out of there, and the, the number jumped to Wagner five and a half. Uh, Wagner's now got the lead, so it's down to one and a half. But uh, some opportunistic folks might have been able to get a little bit more there. What, 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 uh, the original line was uh, plus three, though, was, huh? Yes, yeah, so it was three, and Wagner was trailing earlier, so it went up to plus five and a half. Uh, just within oh. the, within the first you know minute of the game or so. Now Wagner's got the lead, so now it's down to Wagner one and a half. I got you. I got you. I got you. Okay. Anyway, All right. Sorry if I was confused. You got to watch. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's, that's a lot of movement for yeah. early on, man. I mean, that's a little, a little bit of an overreaction, I guess. I don't know. Do you think? Uh, do you like? That, Wa do you like Wagner to win the game? I mean, Matt, I have not watched them that much. I'm looking at, you know, public play and movements and just a little bit, you know, of, uh, you know, Ken Palm and things like that. So, I mean, I just think that, you know, plus the three, it's, yeah. it's worth a spot. You well, know? the reason I, I ask it, is there's you a... Can, you know, I, can count, I can count on one finger how many games now that I've bet on WAG, involving Wagner and Howard. There's so. a 64% um, profit boost on any college basketball opening week bet. Um, right now at DraftKings. So I was like, well, let me just use the boost and see if uh, – yeah, it's, it's a max $25 bet. So I was like, yeah, let me just use the boost gotcha. and, and see if I can uh, yeah, maybe get lucky on that one. But I made I, – I, I gotcha. got a full unit on Wagner plus three. Okay, here we go. Okay. Uh, you know, NIT, a little bit like the minor – a lot like uh, the minor bowls, you know, who's playing, who's opting out, who's, you know, who's declined, who's more excited to play motivationally. Providence and Boston College. Boston College lost a tough one to Virginia in overtime in the ACC tournament. Um, Providence, you know, they lost their leading score to an ACL. They still rallied, but they came up a little bit short. That's a, that's a program that is used to playing in the you know in the NCAA tournament. Not so sure how much uh, how excited Providence is to play. So we're going to take Boston College three and a half. We're going to buy it to plus four. All right, BC plus four. Got it. Ohio State, man, since they made the uh, the move to their interim coach, they played for him, man. They gave him the job. Um, they got absolutely hosed down the stretch by the calls in the Illinois game. They had a three-point lead with uh, two and a half minutes to go, but got some bad calls against them. Now they're back playing against Cornell. I think this is the most excited team to play in the NIT. We're taking the Buckeyes minus 11. Ohio State minus 11, got it. Um, The Kansas State and Iowa. Iowa was kind of a bubble team as well. They're used to playing in the tournament. Um, you're going to see some of these money lines hit in the NIT because it's just so unpredictable. 
very similar to the minor bowl games uh, in college football. Kansas State's worth a swing at plus $2 on a money line. Okay, Kansas State on the money line. Love it. All right. Virginia, they like to slow it down. They like to miss free throws. They shouldn't be in the tournament. <laughs> but sometimes, sometimes. I like how this committee said, man, we work so hard. All they do is, okay, which one already 64? We'll take one out. We'll put one in. <laughs> Oklahoma for Oklahoma for, for Virginia this year. And, you know, we work so damn hard. So anyway, um, this is – people are beating up on Virginia. They're tired of Virginia. But – Virginia should be favored in this game. They're catching points. Plus two and a half go by to three. And right. we're going to take the under in the first half, Virginia, and uh, the, the Virginia game tonight. All right. Virginia plus three. Colorado State. And I'm the looking thing about at Colorado State. Sorry, Colorado under. State very, you, I'm sorry. Did you say first half under? First half under, yes. Got it. Okay, it's a uh, uh, it's fifty five and a half. So we're, we're we do we buy? I guess we just take fifty five and a half, right? This is uh, yeah yeah. This is going to be a common theme in first half under. So it's something I like a lot. Uh, the different stage, kind of the the indifferent crowd. Um, it's not a home crowd. Um, you know, just kind of feeling each other out, some nerves uh, in the first game of the tournament. Uh, I'm I'm a big believer in first half One under. They remaining. hit the last. The la- in the first round, the last uh, 10 years, at a 62% clip. So, mm-hmm. Virginia first half under and Virginia uh, plus the points. All right. Boston College plus four. Ohio State minus 11. A swing at Kansas State on the money line plus $2. Virginia plus three. And the first half under with uh, Virginia and Colorado State tonight. Tomorrow, Otter, and the rest of the week, Beau Ravage. Yep, Bo Ravage, Randy McKay, and Wes Reynolds with their picks as well. Handicappers all week long on this show. And we're Wednesday through Sunday at Bo Ravage. We'll look forward to it. Thanks, Otter. Thank you, man. Good luck. You too, man. Thanks and safe travels. Uh, LSU men tipping off in five minutes. The baseball team first pitch in 35 minutes. Hells tonight as well. So we'll be back tomorrow to recap it all. Kim Mulkey will be here tomorrow as well. We're looking forward to it. Muse, Polly, appreciate you guys. Y'all have an awesome night. We'll see you tomorrow at 3. AFR. As we get on down the road, get to remind you about Evermore. Water is water, right? Nope. Not when it's Evermore. Evermore first and foremost is just delicious. It's natural, all natural, great tasting water. And I mean, I, I was down in the basement and one of my coworkers uh, was, I was, we were talking about Evermore and I had a bottle of it. He's like, I drink great water, get it right at the tap. I'm like, mm, it's not exactly the same thing. This is natural artesian water from a natural artesian well right there on the North Shore. And when you're talking about a rare alkaline source, the pH from 8.8 to 9.1, it is perfected by nature. If you have never tried Evermore, pick it up at a retailer near you. It is delicious. It is affordable. If you want a healthier lifestyle, better hydration, a healthier option for your children, you want Evermore. E-V-A-M-O-R. Evermore.com. Bayou Ford has 7500 off MSRP on new 23 Ford F-150 XLT trucks. 7500 off plus 1.9% financing for 72 months. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy-duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. When it comes to ending cancer, we push forward, always working together for you. That's why our cancer experts at Oshner have clinically integrated with MD Anderson Cancer Center. This means advanced cancer care, including access to life-saving clinical trials and integrating care to treat the whole you. Introducing Oshner MD Anderson Cancer Center, 